What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Techonomics Podcast. It's I, Paul from Non Apple Fan, and as always, I'm joined by my co host, Chris from The Good Old Gamer. What's up, Chris? How's things? Hi, everything's going pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, but my basement down here is a freaking mess. We, because uh, <laughs> of the flooding, we still got a bunch of stuff over here, but then, uh, was it my son decided to stay up till like midnight last night? So I'm like, I'm not getting up early today. So my wife's got mm-hmm. the little packet play down here and everything. So <laughs> while she's working, so it's a bit of a mess. And mm-hmm. I've been messing with some software. And so I got like three different PCs ripped apart because <laughs> I was testing GPUs and CPU combinations, trying to figure out what's the best way to go. So mm-hmm. yeah. So other than the mess down here and messing with a bunch of stuff, things have been pretty good. Things have been pretty good. Weather, mm-hmm. the weather's been kind of meh. Feels a lot really? like spring here. You you got it's a lot weird. of heat going on. You said. Oh but. my god! Yeah, it's heat wave central over here. Feels like I'm in Spain or Portugal or somewhere. Like it's <laughs> it's been. It was twenty in the last three days. It was twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty eight. So like twenty eight. Like I think it's been twenty eight probably three times in my life. Like in my life, that's thirty five years of living. I think I've ever heard of it being twenty eight degrees in Ireland. Uh, we're not built for it and the humidity doesn't drop in ireland so like you know in other places when it gets up to the really high temperatures the humidity comes down that doesn't happen in ireland so it's like 28 but like 90 percent humidity and mm. just like you're standing still and sweat beads are forming on you. it's not even sweat it's just water sticking to your head because it's a cold <laughs> condensing surface uh, it's just like <laughs> it's bad uh yeah and then and nobody Nobody's house is built for that type of what? Oh, oh man, Hulk just committed suicide. He's like, <laughs> nope, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> the heat, the heat. Uh, I was gonna say, nobody's house is uh, built for for this weather either. Like we've got good insulation, so that means that he has a tough time getting in. But we've got no aircon to cool things down. So once it's in, you can't get it out. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it's just like you know what I mean. So like we 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 insulate for for the cold weather, but we don't. It just, it's ridiculous. And my, I sleep in an attic conversion. So no matter how much insulation you put in an attic conversion, right. you're always going to get heat that rises. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not pleasant. It's not, it's like, it was 30 degrees in my daughter's room uh, tonight when she was going mm. to sleep. She's like literally sleeping in a nappy. That's it. <laughs> it's like fucking too hot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit rough. Meanwhile, we got the, uh, the opposite because normally that's how it is here in the summer. It's really hot. It's usually reasonably humid. <laughs> Uh, we have the humidity, so like 80, 90 percent humidity. It's raining all the time. But it was like 82 and humid the other day, and I was just like drenched. I'm like, this is yeah. this is just weird because it's too cold yeah. for me to go in the pool. I'm like, it's only 82 <laughs> degrees outside. I, I I can't deal with that. So, I'm yeah, feeling we- weather just. I'm weird. feeling 82 is pretty high, right? Uh, in terms of Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. 82, you said. Mm-hmm. 82. 82 is 27.7. So it's what it's the temperature it is here. <laughs> I'm here moaning. <laughs> yeah, well, for for us, that's uh, that's not even warm. That's like almost cool weather. So, well, at least yeah, for but... this time of year, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, well, my argument is like, you know, if it gets to the 35... 40 degrees where you are the humidity tends to come down to like the low teens or high 20s it's never like here it just stays 80 90 percent so it's just all it's the same in the winter it's 80 90 percent so even one degree feels like fucking minus 25 (laughs) because you're swimming through the air (laughs) yeah yeah it's pretty pretty miserable so Yeah. yeah so let us know down in the comment section if your weather this summer is pretty weird as well so we've had some pretty strange weather for us Mm-hmm. Um, and then the strangeness continues into the tech. Uh, I would argue that this past week has been one of the strangest weeks that yeah. I've seen in a long time. And I think we're going to talk about a lot of weird stuff that's been going yeah, on. Yeah, it's it's a fucking weird well, though. Weird fucking a week in tech, full stop. It's mm-hmm. I think I think it just gets weirder. It gets stranger by the day. Uh, there's just companies trying to trying to increase ASPs on CPUs gpus that just shouldn't exist and make no sense and just yeah yeah all of the the, the steam deck that launched that's pretty pretty yeah, neat and, right? and that's uh, also kind of a weird thing we we yeah. kind of thought it was coming but it was one of those like maybe it'll happen well yeah. it's and a then, thing boom it's a thing yeah and and you know what the thing about it is is like it, it it's using a cpu that you can't buy on anything <laughs> <laughs> it's like right. <laughs> yeah well, I, so I, that, i'm betting it's probably semi-custom it was is my guess like i'm yeah. sure 
sure Valve's the one who flipped the bill and then AMD threw it on the roadmap. So I don't know. It I think feels like a semi custom. I think that there's a there's a there's a chip on the roadmap that's supposed to have Zen two and RDNA mm -hmm. uh, two. So there is something on the roadmap with it. But like, is it supposed to have four cores and eight threads? But but did Valve put it on the roadmap? That's what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, like I think yeah. Valve flipped the bill and AMD's like, all right, now that's a thing. You know, <laughs> just mm -hmm. throw it mm -hmm. on there. Yeah yeah. So. I, I think I think we could start with the Steam Deck because that's very divisive. I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of opinions on that one on Twitter. You're not on the Twitter sphere, so no. I put a poll up, and the poll basically was like a lot of people are pro the Steam Deck, mm -hmm. but you got some bigger YouTubers saying stuff like not interested, blah 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 blah. I'm not. I personally, I'm not interested, and it's not because I think it's going to be a bad device. It's just it's not, not really thing. interested in a handheld. Like just that's it. Um, and I will wait to see reviews to see how the interface works because you know that's my biggest worry is how the interface. I mean, it's will gonna be make. Steam Big Picture. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not rocket science. It's gonna be Steam yeah. Big Picture mode. That's all it is. Yeah. Well, that would if it if it's done well, that sounds good. Um, but I'll just wait for reviews. That's that's my 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 take on that. And if I really want to try a handheld, sure, I'll buy one. Sure. It turns out you can sell them for uh for five or six times the MSRP already. Did you see this? No, that I, that I haven't seen yet. No. People are selling their reservations for, for $5,000. <laughs> reservations. This thing, you don't even know if it's definitely launching when they say it's going to launch. It's like, right. it's a glorified GoFundMe, right? <laughs> well, that, that, that's why they only took five bucks, because if yeah. they push it another month or two, they're like, you only gave us five bucks. You know, yeah, if you had to foot exactly. the whole bill and then they push it a month, yeah. that'd piss yeah. off a lot of people. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think, and and you know what, the fact of the matter is, if you can get, if you could, if you can reserve one, it was only five bucks. So it's not like this is what I, I, I always say I don't like this whole pre order nonsense because it used to start with you come in, you put your name down, right. we get you one. Uh, first come, first service, we get, we'll get you one. Then it turned into you put five bucks down, we get you one. Then it turned in, you have to put 10% of the asking price down. Then it turned in, you pay for the whole thing and we'll get you one. And then it turned into you pay for the whole thing and you might get one. <laughs> Probably not. Whenever we get one, we'll give it to you. Like five bucks, and we're selling a limited amount of them. I, I like that. That's probably the best way. It's the best approach you're going to have in 2021, right? Right. Yeah. And I mean, I, I suppose it's fair. Otherwise, you just have like bots just saying, "Hey, I want all of them" or something. You know, you have to yeah. have individual accounts with individual credit cards. So it probably helped out with that as well. So yeah, five yeah. bucks ain't the end of the world. Speaking yeah. of which, if you want to support the channel, you know, links are down below. Mine's five bucks. Paul's only one dollar, so you can go ahead and support him. So, yeah, you, you know, five, five bucks ain't button. that much. My giant button is five bucks, though, I will say. Okay. Well, and then if you go to his videos, click the join button. His is five. Mine's also five if you do that way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a lot of money, but it helps out, and it adds up. That's kind of what, yeah, what we're exactly. saying here, you know. Exactly, Steam, exactly. Steam knows, hey, we got some cash in the bank, and... <laughs> you know they're putting the rest on credit anyway, so yeah. what do they care? <laughs> well, well, it's an interesting device, right? Because it's got RDNA two, it's got eight CUs. Mm. Uh, probably gonna like this thing's probably gonna be fifty percent faster than a Vega, an eight core Vega, possibly. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like you gotta. I would is assume it using, so. Is it using LPDDR five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. That's that's a that's a plus as well. So yeah, probably gonna be fifty percent faster than a. Uh, than a a Vega A core, so any of the existing ones, uh, not much faster in the CPU department. It is just in fact a Zen two CPU, but right. that's good enough. That's good enough for anything you're going to be playing at. What is it, twelve hundred <laughs> by eight hundred? <laughs> yeah, yeah, twelve hundred by eight hundred. It's the same as the Aya Neo, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I actually think it'll probably get double the performance of the Aya Neo because that only had the six CUs. So you got to figure you got thirty three percent more CUs plus RDNA two plus the faster RAM. Mm -hmm. uh, plus the higher clock speeds, so I figured probably be about twice as fast as that. So mm -hmm. that's quite exciting, right? And you yeah. can you can get away with a lot of stuff on that INEO, right? You can play everything. You can play every game. There is not one game on the planet that will not play. You just have to keep yeah. lowering settings till it gets playable. Mm -hmm. but, so there you go. So you you take that and you maybe you're going from playing everything to having some of the nice stuff on. And right. still playing everything, yeah. Basically, so you'll turn you'll turn things down less. Like, mm. uh, you know, 800p low might might be all you need. You know, like on uh, Metro Exodus, you got to go to that uh, uh, shader scaler. So basically, the resolution scaler, and you got to keep going down mm -hmm. <laughs> until you get there. 
So yeah, you're probably when I was doing, I was probably doing like 400 P but mm-hmm. you know, on that small of a device, you can't really tell the difference. You know, the pixel density is so high, like you can run very low res on that and it's still going to look mm-hmm. just fine. Yeah, no, it's exciting. Like I have a, I have a place to, I have a PS Vita and that's only a 580p or four. What's a, is a 580p is there is a 540p or whatever, 540p. 540 got, maybe. Yeah, it was an OLED, so I will say. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 540p. Um, and you, you you don't look at that and go, oh, it's very pixelated. Like it's a five inch screen. You don't look at that and go, oh, it's very pixelated. You look at it and go, yeah, it looks sharp. It looks crisp. Everything's fine here. Um, like, do you know what I mean? So I, I, I can't see it. You're scaling that up to what is it? A seven or eight inch display with a higher resolution? It's seven inch display. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a crane fly in here. I hate these bastards. <laughs> yeah, it is the season for that. Yeah. Uh, right you know before this, I was walking the kid, got spider webs all over me. So that's, yeah. if you see me doing this, it's like trying to get them off of me. You know, the crane flies, they're like idiots. They just like, they just bump up against things. They're like, <laughs> yeah, we, we call them June bugs. <laughs> yeah. June bugs, whatever. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, fun, fun. And he's going to die. Come near me and I'll chop you in half. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, but back to, back to the steam deck. I can see why it's divisive. See, the problem is, is you have a lot of these. I'm going to call them PCM errors mm. at this point. Mm. The PCM errors are, are the cancer of PC gaming at this point. And every day they become more cancerous. Basically, whenever Paul and I do this and we start railing on something, it's because of these morons. Um, you might be a part of this class, but as long as you're not a jerk, you don't really fit into the class because you have to be an asshole to, to really be a PCM <laughs> Um and, and an unnecessarily asshole asshole. Yeah. But anyway, these are the people that are like, Oh, you know, it only draws so much power. Why, why don't they have like a, a 400 watt power limit on these things? And I see stupid comments like this. These people don't understand that this device is literally the fastest and cheapest device that does this thing mm-hmm. on the planet. And yeah. all they can do is go, well, my desktop is faster. It's like, yeah, well, go play your desktop in the car. You know, mm-hmm. try that. Yeah. Or on the plane. Uh, or on the plane, or on a train, or anywhere that is not near an outlet. Because um, yeah. even if you plug a desktop into, like, you know, the car adapters, um, that that's not going to work. Those only go up to, like, 180 watts, which yeah. today doesn't even power a GPU. So we're talking yeah. about something that can run off a battery properly for CPU and GPU and can play all of the modern games. It basically just shows how shitty and inefficient your high-end graphics are. Um, mm-hmm. You're wasting so much power, and you're just basically getting the worst of the worst. Meanwhile, something like the Steam Deck's the best of the best, but they have to call it crap because it doesn't do all the stuff. Yeah. Um, those people are never going to buy one, but there are a lot of people out there that are on the go a lot, you know? And it's the same thing that I talked about when I talked about the INEO. You know, if you're traveling a lot, if you're not at home, um, you know, a bunch of my friends, they're at home maybe two days a month, you know, mm-hmm. that's it. They're gone mm-hmm. the rest of the time. You know, th- this type of device is perfect for those people. Yeah. And there's a lot of them out there. And a lot of kids today, same sort of thing. Like when I was a kid, you'd leave the house, you take a ball, you find some friends, you play ball. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they all want to sit around and play some sort of stupid video game. It's fine. I did it with Pokemon. We all kind of did it, mm-hmm. you know, but you know, that's the new thing. Go to the park, hang out with your friends and play fucking Fortnite, you know mm-hmm. that's a real thing and this device can do that your desktop can't do that your no. laptop can't do that either so because your laptop will die in like 30 minutes so mm-hmm. yeah uh, that that's no. really what it comes down to there's just no, people lap- that huh? sorry i was gonna say no a laptop with that chip inside it <laughs> that, right. that's my job that's my job <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that might be better, but, you know, yeah. you can't really play a laptop while sitting on the bleachers. No, you, know? you can't. No. Yeah. no, I agree. I think I think what people have to look at, this, like, people are looking at this and they're comparing it to a PC. And I think that it is a PC and it, it is, is PC gaming uh, because I've seen that argument made, in, in you know, by, by somebody who is very PCMR. Uh, spe- uh, uh, we we won't name names, uh, but like somebody who's recommended thirty nineties over thirty seventies in the past, uh, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, so I've seen I've seen this this you know being compared that this is not a piece. It's not you're not PC gaming because you're using a controller, for instance. You're not PC gaming because it's a huh? you're not PC. It's fucking PC. You're P- But let, the reality is, <laughs> if you, you want to compare this, you know, this is this takes what the Switch does, 
and providing right. the OS, as I said, the, the the jury's out on the OS and how it works and all that kind of stuff, right? I mean, it's you can load Windows, worst case scenario, yeah. if you wanted to. But um, it's uh, it takes what the Switch does and basically gives you probably like twice, three times the, 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 the power in terms of GPU and God only knows how much faster in terms of CPU. So, I mean... It, you know, you're arguing like it's probably three times the power of a switch, but for probably what? more, honestly. For for what, like a hundred bucks more if you buy the cheap fifty dollars if you compare to the OLED, but yeah, fifty hundred dollars yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, hundred dollars more. So like, <laughs> where's the argument? It's 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 interesting, is what I would say in terms of what I'm inter- as, as 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 from my perspective, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's all I am right now. When I see reviews and I see what I can do, maybe that might peak my eye a little bit, and I'll be like, "Oh, maybe I should get one of these," you know. But right. until well, then, for for you, uh, if they put that chip in a laptop, that would probably be it's my jam yeah. for, for your yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and th- that's kind of the whole point. It's like you don't have to be super excited about this particular device, but there's going to be a whole lot of people doing that, and the more people that do buy into these devices. You know, then the more efficient both AMD and Intel are going to have to be when they come to these things. And NVIDIA has got no presence in this market, by the way. No. Um, so, you know, that that's good. And that's just going to lead to better, more efficient laptops. That's going to lead to everything. So there's not a whole lot of downside. Um, but the Switch comparison, that's my favorite. Because people mm-hmm. are like, well, the Switch is cheaper. Switch is infinitely more expensive. I don't know how to get this across to you. The Switch is a minimum three to four thousand dollar investment, just because you have to buy a real controller. You know, I have an X. I have like eight Xbox controllers running around. I can connect that to the Steam Deck. All of them will work. Every controller, at my PlayStation controllers, they'll yeah. all work with it. St- uh, with the the freaking Switch, you have to buy the Switch mm-hmm. controller to go with the Switch. You have to buy the Switch version of the games that you already own that you want to play portably. So any games that you like and you want to play. You have to rebuy. Not only do you have to rebuy them, they're basically the same launch price when they came out. These work with it. These yeah. work with the stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keyboard, mouse, whatever. Your flight stick. <laughs> you know, your your wheel. Yeah, all yeah. your peripherals work with it. So you don't have to buy any of that shit. Uh, all your games. You don't have to rebuy any of your games. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the the switch to me is an unimaginably expensive device like i was interested in the switch so i figured it out i need to drop like eight grand to get it up to where i want because if i have it i want my entire library accessible so that means i'd buy every single game that i like again on the device and i'm like that's that's stupid expensive with this steam thing i spend four hundred dollars i buy a little ssd boom i'm done that's it no more investing i have everything else that i need Mm -hmm. and that's how many times has people who who invest in the Nintendo ecosystem bought Mario? I made this argument before, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy Mario again. Mario's a bloody good game, but you shouldn't need to buy it twenty times. You shouldn't mm-hmm. need like you you get Mario for 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 the Wii U, then you buy the same Mario for the for the Switch, and then like you know, you got it for the Wii initially, then you get <laughs> right. Like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You should not. You buy it on one account. And I'm cool, like, even though I don't like that, like, owning my own games, but, like, you buy it on the one account, you should own it forever, and you should be able to just log into that account and get it again, and, you know, they, they should be the ones doing the... Because that, you're... By doing that, you're incentivizing people to... More people to want to go to your newer platform, right? You're going to get hardware sales from it, right? And Nintendo's all about those hardware sales. Like, right. they make money from selling hardware. No other console developer, or no other console manufacturer makes money by selling consoles. They make not money not by at launch, not at, not yeah. at launch. No. Yeah. So like you know, in Nintendo do so. Nintendo want to incentivize everybody to move to the new thing. Then incentivize people by having that back lo- back catalog of games that we all know you have without re- recharging everybody. But you know what? People are willing to do it, so you can't really hate on Nintendo for doing it because people do it all the time. People rebuy all the stuff. Well, I wonder. I'm, well, well that, that, you just made another argument for the Steam Deck. You can run emulators on it, so you don't mm-hmm. have to rebuy any of that shit. You own the game, just go yeah. rip it, put it on your, your Steam Deck, and poof, you're up and running. Yep, 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 yep. No, I completely agree. I think, I think, it's, I think it's interesting. Probably, for me, that is, is the one thing that I would be very interested in for, because I was playing uh, Soviet Strike. Do you remember Soviet Strike? Do you remember that no. game? Soviet Strike was like... A, a helicopter, you're an Apache gunship, and you fly around killing things on the PS1. I really like that game. 
and it's it's kind of like top down. Like, could you imagine GTA, but you're a helicopter, right? Okay, That's yeah. kind of graphics level, the original GTA, but you're a helicopter, right? That's the graphics level, and like you fly over, like you know, you, you land down, you drop survivors off, you you fly back up, you can dry out, fly over. Yeah, uh, you know, kind of like uh, the reload pads and get more missiles and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you ever played Pilot Wings and then they had the helicopter missions. Sounds familiar. I don't know whether I've seen that one, but uh, yeah, it sounds familiar. But yeah, that I was playing that on my uh, PS Vita because emulator. I like mm-hmm. emulators. I see, so that would be a big driving force for me. Sometimes those emulators can struggle on the PS Vita. They're, it's not it, it, a lot of them work, but some of them don't. And you're just getting more and more. Like you could probably do 60 N64 and. Um, well, on the, the other one? on the Steam Deck, you could probably do Wii U and probably yeah. even most PS3 games, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, you're probably up to last, not last gen consoles, but the generation before that. Seven which is, gen, yeah. Yeah, which is good. Like, it's good. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, as I said before. Um, but we shall see. We shall see with the reviews. I just don't think people should be so fucking negative about it. I, I don't think people should be so de- divisive about it. Just, it's another product. And you know what? The things we're going to talk about later on, maybe this might be your only fucking option to get into PC gaming in the future. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I got a lot of questions, basically, on that that sort of line of thinking. Um, yeah. Well, I got a lot of questions for this one. Um, but yeah, so so that that's the thing. I mean, r- realistically, you don't need to hate on something if it's not for you. You know, mm-hmm. like, Paul and I don't hate on Lamborghinis. We're never going to buy one. We wouldn't recommend them to anybody, mm-hmm. but, you know, uh, it's just not for us, and it's just yeah. not something that we would recommend. That's fine. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay for there to be things that are not for you. Mm-hmm. I guess that's really the whole point, you yeah. know? Uh, you know, if the thing was coming out at a 1000 bucks, then you could be like, well, this is just freaking stupid, and then we would agree with you. But it, it's not. It's, mm-hmm. it's good product at a good price. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah, exactly. And just to clear up, there was a lot of confusion about uh, the SSDs and not being upgradable. You can upgrade the SSDs on every mo- every model. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gabe said it. So if Gabe if Gabe takes it back, he did say it's not meant to be user upgradable. But like, yeah, you'll you probably had, void if, your warranty. But who yeah. cares? One year warranties are worthless anyway. Yeah, you technically not void your warranty either, there, now, buddy. You're not really because you know. Well, it depends. I mean, here in the U.S., right to repair isn't a real thing yet. They're still pushing for it. So you have yeah. no right to open up your devices here. Oh, you have in Europe. I thought you had the, those those uh, warranty void if remove stickers and all were all, like, not really based in any law. <laughs> like, they were just... Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of those, are you going to take Valve to court? Because they're, you know, they have retainers on, like, 800 lawyers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that that's that's the big thing. It's like... Who cares? Like I said, anything that has less than a three or five year warranty, just assume it has no warranty. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got the return period. If it works past the 30 day return period, past that, you're mm-hmm. on your own. That's as far as the way I, I understand the way warranties work here in Europe, um, if you if you open it up and you damage it by opening it up, that's on you. If you open it up and put uh, something in... If you put like if you put a if you put another thing in it and that fucking breaks it forever, that's on you. But if you put something in it and it works and then you can return it like so let's say you take the SSD out, right? Right. And you install a new SSD and it works. Uh well you can't or it may it with that new SSD in it. But if you take that out and put your new your old SSD back in and it works like it came out of a factory well, then you can RMA that, as far yeah. as I understand. Yeah, well, here's the magical thing. You know, you send something in, whatever. Let's say you do that and, and whatever. All I have to do is just take a screwdriver and a hammer and just hit a memory chip, break a little thing, go, you broke it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's, no, there's, no, there's no possible way that you, as the average person, have any ground to stand on in any of this. You open it up, you're on your own. Warrant, like I said, four or five year warranties. Usually they'll actually honor those. Anything less than that, you have no warranty. So don't worry about it. Just open the damn thing up. Yeah. If, um, it, breaks, I, if it breaks in the first couple of weeks, you can just return it. Every place has that option. I have to write back to Celso. Celso's trying to uh, mine me for leaks here, I think. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Well, so I got to say, I, I, 
Uh, well, let, let's let's bring up Celso. So it, it's actually kind of funny because, uh, as you guys probably know, uh, the uh, launch date for the Navi 23 6600 6600 XT has already been leaked. But it was actually funny because right before this, Celso's like, hey, guys, I don't know if you know, but I know when the the uh, Navi 23s are coming out. And I'm like, dude, this this came out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just happened to miss it. So he got it from his source. But didn't he say in his original video on the 68 that it was coming out in August anyway? So like, yeah. I think I think we need to give credit to Celso. I think Celso mm-hmm. was one of the first ones to do that, if not the first one. So Yeah, he was uh, the first. Yeah, so like, I've been hearing rumors about... Like, I hear rumors. Celso, I don't know whether Celso hears the same way that i hear guy. things <laughs> yeah no i wouldn't say the same guy we know we know for a fact me and celso don't you have some of the same guys but not like but um i mean like i don't know whether he hears the same uh way that i hear things because a lot of the times i hear things it's like you know it might be coming out in august uh you know first two weeks or something like that and uh you know you just have to extrapolate whether that's real or not or whether you know and a, a lot of times you hear rumbling. So I heard first half of August. I did hear that uh, before Celso did his video, but I didn't know whether it was real or not. I don't know whether it was true or not. Right. Uh, you know, like the FSR stuff, I talk to that guy all the time now um, on Discord. But when I first heard that, it was the first time I'd ever heard anything from him. And actually, I have to write back to him now. That reminds me. Sorry, busy today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, what was I was going to say, yeah, the... The um, I keep meaning to have another phone call with him, but um, so like he'll uh, he 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 came up to me and just literally said, Big fan, FSR, June, and that was it. And I was like, and in case you're wondering, I'm uh, such and such at such and such at such and such, and I was like, So I went off and I asked questions about that, and people came back to me and said, Yep, 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 yep. So then I went off, and but like that's you know, I didn't know who this guy was, it was a bit weird. I did. It was it was on Twitter, so I did check his account, make sure that it wasn't a burner account that like it's been active for a while. You right. know what I mean? Like, cause a lot of times you'll get burner accounts. Like I got fake uh, pictures of uh, now they were stupid because they sent me fake pictures of Navi Twenty One, not knowing that Cortex had already shown his Navi Twenty One ones, and then I'd already seen Navi Twenty One. So like they right, weren't yeah. gonna accomplish anything, and 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 it came with like it's not gonna be the tour the eighty. I was like, yeah, it fucking is, buddy. <laughs> but uh, but like yeah. So as I said, it's it's hard to distinguish. But yeah, the sixty six hundred XT eleventh, I think, is the rumor today, right? Or the, uh, no, the rumor? It's a leak. Yeah. Well, the leak is the eleventh. Um, I I guess I could say confirmed leak at this point. Yeah, because uh, there's all the multiple sources basically coming. Out yeah, this yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I, as I said, I can say that I heard first two weeks. So, right. uh, Celso said the August, and then he he came to us today and said that. Whoops. <laughs> and then um, and um, other like just just other things, and then you see the video cards thing. So it's pretty much yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be the the so that, that's yeah. coming out, and I like how uh, there's no updated MSRP information. I don't I don't think AMD has an MSRP number yet. There is uh, no MSRP. There is oh, no yeah. MSRP. Well, there is there, there there will be, and then the AIBs are going to jack it up at least fifty to a hundred dollars. So yeah. no matter no matter what the MSRP is, it's not going to be a thing, and it'll ne- it won't won't be hit. That's yeah. that's the real shame. So my guess is AMD is going to put a three forty nine msrp on it and then they're all mm. going to be 400 dollars plus yeah they're all gonna be they're all gonna be nearly nearly the same prices as, as i said before uh 800 bucks <laughs> is is the most expensive this card can be and people well, are like, oh, well, oh i don't know i mean 6700 xt's right now are 700 so well 700 bucks then if it's gone down in a week then 700 so 700 so 700 bucks is the most expensive this card can be at launch whatever the price of the 6700 xt is drop 50 bucks off it and that's the most expensive this card can be uh, sure. and i'm not being facetious i'm not being a, a, i'm just telling you that's the reality you will go online and launch day of this and there will be no msrp cards whatsoever no. ever none no. none the only msrp cards you ever get at launch are the founders editions or like the one skew that nvidia mandates you must have and they're never in stock on day one they always wait a few months to drop them anyway 
Uh, you know, because they don't want to do them. They don't want to sell them. So they're just going to release their more expensive ones first. And the same with AMD. You know, AMD probably goes to Sapphire and Power Color and goes, because they're their AVGAs and stuff. You know, they go, they go, you have to have an MSRP card. And they go, yes, AMD will have an MSRP card. And they go and they release, like, you know, the Hellhound and the, what's a Sapphire do? The Pulse. Isn't the, that's the Sapphire, night. right? Oh, you're talking about the cheap one? Yeah, the Pulse, isn't it? That's the one they, they call the... That's you, that used to be. I bet you they have an even cheaper one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's that's the one that they're going to sell at MSRP. Right. But they won't launch that on launch day. They'll launch the Nitro Plus and, and you know, the, the Red Devil version of it. And, the, and that's the re- that's just the way they're going to do it. And they're going to be fucking 450. If it's, 500, if it's 350, they're going to be 450 and 500. So that's how they're going to price them. Well, I, I, I would say the easiest way to go is, let's say it's as fast as a 5700 xt how much are those going for six seven hundred dollars i yeah. think something like that yeah. so yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be close to that that'd be my I, guess i don't think it's going to be faster than a 5700 xt though chris i have to give my honest opinion i think it's going to be faster in 1080p i think it's going to struggle in 1440p i've said this a few times and people keep saying oh you know the infinity cash i think that amd are going to market this as a 1080p card they're not mm. going to show you any 1440p benchmarks they're going to do their heart damnedest to get reviewers in the review decks to talk about how it's a 1080p card. And, you know, only the likes of Hardware Unboxed and Gamers Nexus are actually going to do the, and maybe Linus, because he, when he can show AMD in a negative light, he will. Um, <laughs> they'll do the 1440p numbers and go, wait a minute, this is slower than a 5700 XT or 40 I, mean, I mean, I mean, if we're getting honest, if this thing is, let's say, $350, $400, fake MSRP, whatever, um that should be a 1440p to 4k card at this point yes um 1080p at this point in time needs to be sub 150 Let, let's be honest uh mm-hmm. under 150 dollars. now granted there's not gonna be any discrete graphics cards at that price point but still that's where 1080p should be you yeah. should not be buying graphics cards for 1080p gaming anymore that's that's where we should be. You should be buying old 1440p cards to then run at seven uh, 1080p. Yeah, that yeah. that's how things should be going, or mm-hmm. something really lightweight like a Navi 24 maybe. That would be a 1080p card, mm-hmm. but you know that wouldn't even require a power connector. That's how efficient those will be. So yeah, no, this this is it. If it's around a 5700 XT, that was that is definitely a 1440p card. You shouldn't be mm-hmm. using one of those for 1080p, and. Uh, like I said, if you lower settings and use something like FSR, that quickly becomes a 4K card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this is this is what I want to drive home is that AMD marketed the 5700 XT as a 1440p card, mm-hmm. and somewhere in the in the magic of of marketing, this level of performance has now become 1080p. And I understand people can say, well, it, you know, that card was older. No, this was a top end. AMD said top end ultimate experience 1440p card right which it so, was yeah so that's what they said it was and i agreed with them at the time oh and it was an entry level even celso said it it was an entry level 4k card at the launch of that card right mm-hmm. the same with the let's go with the rx uh 58 50 rx 580 rx 480 that was an entry level 1440p card but it was a bloody good 1080p card, right? Right. So it could do 1440p. You shouldn't have... Well, you could, you could buy it for 1440p. It was that good when it launched. Yeah, um, you still can. You do 1440p yeah. medium low, mm-hmm. it'll still work. Yeah. yeah. But my... So my argument is, is that AMD markets this, and then all of a sudden, when they want to charge more, they're going to flip the script. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you're going to compare it to a 5700 XT, but only in 1080p... You know, oh no, now it's uh, 6600. Like, the 6600 XT, or the 5600 XT was a 1080p high card. So if, if this is replacing this, it needs to be 289 or 279 or 300. And that's it. Because it's a replacement for the 5600 XT. If you want to go with the new naming schemes that AMD have invented, they invented them with the 5700 XT. It will then write, fine, we're going with your new naming schemes. Well, then, this is a, 60, this is a 5600 XT replacement. The 5600 XT was, 200, was 280 bucks. So this card needs to be 40%, 30 to 40% faster than that card, which I don't believe it's going to be. No. And then be the same price. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Uh, at best, you'd get performance per dollar, but I think we're actually going to get performance per dollar regression here. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's where the super lineup that, that seems to be all the rage mm -hmm. now, the RTX 30 super lineup, I think that's to reset their MSRPs. I think mm -hmm. they're like, well, we done fucked up. Let's uh, erase those before anybody can buy them. <laughs> and then we're just going to redo this whole stack <laughs> top to bottom. And yep. that's what I'm pretty sure the super lineup's going to be. And AMD's like, well, we haven't filled our stack, so we can just start screwing people now. Yep. So, like, yeah, everybody's going to be like, at $400, this thing's nowhere near a 3060 Ti. But when the 3060 Ti relaunches as the... 3060 super or whatever the hell they're gonna call it it's gonna basically be the same they'll, they'll like knock off one sm so people will be like it's not the same thing it's yeah. clocked like two percent higher and they knock two percent of the sms <laughs> off it's like it's the same damn thing yeah. but anyways um yeah when they charge five hundred dollars for it next time you know the, the it'll look more in line and mm -hmm. i think that's what what's gonna happen um and this also ties into what celso said the bill of materials in his last video He's hearing the bill of materials for both AMD and NVIDIA. That means what they're charging, their AIBs, is going up again. So, you know, yeah. you have your MSRP, let's say the 3080, for example. You have $700 MSRP. None of these guys can really hit that with any sort of margin. There's maybe a 1% there, and they're not going to do that. <clears throat> so they're basically paying $699 for these things. I'm betting that they're paying over MSRP at this point. That'd be my guess. Uh, that mm -hmm. some of these AIBs, the system integrators, they're going to be paying more than the MSRP, and then they have to sell them to you if yeah. these prices continue to go up. Yeah, well, look, I've talked about this before, and I know for a fact, this is a fact. This is not, uh, you know, made up. This is 100% the truth. This is this as, as true as my daughter is ginger. This is a 100% fact. Uh, on the founder's cards... At retail, retailers are allowed, so the retailers who sell the founders are allowed to make 7.98% margin. So retailers make 7.98%. So I don't know what the what the AIBs are making on, it could be the AIBs are not making, because they're not selling founders editions. Right. So I'd be curious to know, though I would, if they're making 7.98%, and then, you know, they have to come up with these exotic coolers because they, they have to come up with a better cooling solution than the FE card to kind of make it look like it's worth the extra money, right? They have they just to do throw, All they got to do is throw RGB on it. That's all they have yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all they really do. Yeah, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, can I just... I just want to show you this, right? Actually, I haven't realized this since I got this card, but I just realized it on my live stream. It's cracked right here. So this bit came off, right? This is the ceramic back plate. That came oh. with the MSI Gaming X Trio. It's fucking plastic. It's one hundred percent plastic. This is a piece of broken plastic. It's not this ceramic backplate, my ass. <laughs> it's that ceramic, that that all natural particle board, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that all natural plastic ceramic. Yeah. It arrived. Um, it arrived broken. It arrived with like a bent. Uh, you know the, the 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 little bits that screw into the kit your case. Mm -hmm. That was bent, and there was a piece of plastic loose in the in the box. I don't know what happened to it, but um, yeah. But lo long story, like I just with these graphics cards and all of the things, you're you're right. They're gonna. This is a whole reset the fucking argument. And what they did the last time with the super lineup is they dropped the pricing, um, while kind of except for with the twenty eighty, but with, well, kind of finding a way to make more margin because they 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 found die like basically they found dies that were yielding better you know what i mean like they they kind of rejigged the lineup so that they were getting more well, skews well they had to because navi was coming out they, yeah. they had to rejigger it a bit because they really pushed pushed the piss out of uh you know the original turing and they weren't selling the problem is now you know they're overselling so they're like well time to go back up boys yeah. So we're going to get just... the opposite. We're going to get the anti-super is what it's going to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. We're going to get like, yeah, that 103 die is going to come out of retirement, right? <laughs> it's going to be like, uh, you know, it, it's you know, it's probably way cheaper to make than a 102. But it's well, probably they're, be... they're tired of wasting 102s on like the 3080. Yeah, you know, yeah It's yeah, a exactly. waste of money for them to make 3080s yeah. now. So that 103 is going to come out and that's going to be a, a, an 80 class card or mm -hmm. an 80 super uh you know and then they're gonna they're probably gonna break that down into another one that's gonna be a 70 super 
uh you know because this thing probably got it probably gonna have eight thousand shaders or whatever it's supposed to have like so that was what it probably had you know initially right and then it went you know or maybe it has seven thousand something and they can somehow get it a little bit they can clock 10 well, probably clock higher. it higher yeah. yeah 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 so they'll they'll do something so this would this thing will be as fast as a an 80 but like we'll have 16 gigabytes of ram because they'll reduce the memory bandwidth and up the clock speed and do all this so it's same technically the same bandwidth but you've got 16 gigabytes of memory instead of oh, 10, wa- instead wa- of 10. watch it'll have 11 gigs they'll, <laughs> they'll put 11 yeah, gigs yeah, on it 11 gigs of ram on it and then it'll be 899 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fuckers, they're fuckers. He's an absolute, he's a master, isn't he? You just have to sit back sometimes and just look at that man and just go, Jesus Christ, he's good at not, his job. Not really. He just under, I don't know. He He's played his audience, you know, the, the non-thinking NVIDIA-only buyer. Um, He has whipped them into just a certain way of thinking. You and I can do it. We know exactly what they're going to do, what they're going to think, and how they're going to react to everything. So, I mean, Jensen's mm-hmm. technically no smarter than we are <laughs> on that regard. Uh, it's just how he got them to that point. That's that's where you mm-hmm. got to tip your hat and be like, you know, I don't have people. Uh, you kind of do. You got people throwing you money. Shit, they threw me money on your own uh, live stream <laughs> last week. Uh, I don't know how you do that, but, you know, we, we don't. We're, we're nowhere near our $100 million goal. Is what I'm saying. Mm, Jensen yeah. somehow figured out a way to get to his $100 billion goal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he's, you got to kind of tip your hat a little bit to that. Uh, I don't have to like it because it's literally destroying, you know, the hobby that I, I grew up loving it. And like every time I go outside and I walk my kid and I'm just like, man, you know, this kind of reminds me of when the, you know, the 7800 GTX launched. Like it just, you know, the type of weather yeah. and stuff in the morning. Cause like I, I wasn't expecting it. Just showed up one day. One day it was here. I was yeah. like, whoa, that's yeah. awesome. And, yeah. you know, like I, stuff was fun. It was a lot of fun back way back when. And, you know, if it was too expensive to buy, you just didn't buy it. You just yeah. waited for them to come out with better stuff. I was, I remember I was there. Uh, I was sitting on a toilet and work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, I'd arrived into work so I used to start work at half one when I was on a night shift and um, you know half one till half nine was my shift and uh, I'd, I so I arrived into work uh, did a couple of jobs went up my my bathroom was on the third. You know, everybody has their bathroom in work, right? So right. You got, you got, like, well, if you work in a big place right, with, with 20 bathrooms, you've got your bathroom, right? So my bathroom was on the third floor outside of physiotherapy. So if anybody ever needed that toilet, I apologize if you never if you couldn't get in and I was in there, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I went in there, opened my phone and uh, went to actually funny of Tom's Hardware. And on Tom's Hardware, I was talking about the first ever Teraflop uh, graphics card. 5800, 50, the, the 5870. No, it was the, no, first ever teraflop. It was the 5870 or something like that, wasn't it? No, it was the 4850. Well, whatever. I, it was the, well, I remember looking at the 5870, right? <laughs> the 5870. Uh, and I remember looking at the 5870 and going, wow. Like, and it just surprised me out of nowhere. Like, I didn't know that card was dropping, I didn't mm-hmm. know any news about it. I didn't hear anything, and the, the the review was there, and you could read the review, and then it was like three hundred and eighty bucks. I was like, "Give me one of them!" <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. World's <laughs> fastest GPU just launched three hundred and eighty dollars, yeah. and we're only talking about two thousand nine, boys. We're not talking like thirty years ago. Yeah, yeah. I have to look this up. How many T flops? What? Yeah, I was right, Chris. I was right. One point one two teraflops. <laughs> yeah. The for, first ever uh, one teraflop graphics card was the 5870. Um, 1.12 teraflops. Pretty sure it was the 4850 because that was kind of like its big deal. Black and white. There you go. Uh, I can do the math right now if you want. Uh, uh, 4850. 4850. Four, I, well, let's do the 4870 because I just know that off the top of my head. That oh, was they're 800. Both, they're both 800. Times uh, 64. Let's see. Times I can't, two. I can't remember the clocks on these things. Times times seven hundred and fifty megahertz. Uh, yep. One seven. Well, seven point six is what I got. Nope, I'm on tech power up. So you have eight hundred times two, of course. Uh, where is it? Where's the thing? Is so you get eight hundred times sixty four times two times. 
times two times uh seven seven hundred seven hundred and fifty because i was doing the the, the 4870 because it doesn't matter if i like it and i got seven point yeah it's 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 point seven of a teraflop um i don't know they got one teraflop on here and i remember that was in the marketing too one teraflop oh there the, you go the i remember tom's hardware said the 5800 the 5870 was the first one teraflop graphics card and there you go uh, Anyways, looks... we're arguing semantics. They were both big fucking <laughs> deals when they launched. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the 4850 like just curb stomped the uh, the GTX 260 mm -hmm. and cost like a third. I think yeah. the 260 was, was like 450 or something. It was, it was 199. Like two, it launched at 199. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The 58, the 5870 was was uh, the same speed as two HD 4870s. All right, and uh, cost you the same price, at slightly over the same price as one. I so I think I think the thirty eight seventy was three hundred and fifty bucks, right? Uh, I think it was two ninety nine for the five twelve. Yeah, I, I, I got them at two gig, one gig. I was talking yeah, about yeah. The forty eight ninety, I think you're right, three fifty one gig. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just a couple dollars more. Yeah, yeah. And you're getting twice the performance. Oh, yeah. And those things overclocked as well. Like, they were running at 800 megahertz. You could do a 1,000 on them. Easy, man. Easy. Mm -hmm. I just With 20%. lower style coolers. Yeah, 20%. <laughs> do you remember the 59 set, 5970 had a blower style cooler? Mm -hmm. I have a one. 59, yeah. I, th I think that's it, maybe? No, oh, it's somewhere yeah. over there. <laughs> 5970 had a blower style cooler. That was insane. Yeah, but it didn't, doesn't even run hot or loud. <clears throat> no. And wasn't yeah. it like wasn't it like six hundred bucks or five hundred and fifty bucks or something? Yeah, so, somewhere around there. Yeah. So like you weren't even paying double the money. AMD do that. If AMD did that today, they would charge you more than double. Like they would charge oh, yeah. you. Let's say so two sixty eight two sixty eight hundred XTs. They charge you two grand for that. Two grand is what they charge. Oh, you. easy. Yeah. Like easy. And like I know they can't do it because there's no scaling and all that kind of stuff. But if there was scaling, like there was, because we're talking about back in the day, Crossfire and SLI, you shouldn't be doing it because your frame times were all over the place. But nobody cared because they were like EPing, and my average frame rate is higher. So like you know, I mean, what I, mean? I, mean I cared. Uh, I tried it, and I was like, this doesn't work. <laughs> I thought it was just me, but it's like, nope. Yeah. You get these micro stutters and this and that. Nah, I'm like, uh, uh, no thanks. I had a 4870. I turned it off. I turned one of them off, to be honest. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I turned one of them off. I dis I disabled Crossfire, and then um and then I bought a GTX 480. You know, after talking about all the nice things that I said about the 5870, I still bought the GTX 480 because it was the fastest. Oh which is, which is, yeah. That was that was old me. Like that was back in the day when you. This is why I can relate to these people because I was one of those people. You know, right. I was like, what is the fastest? Like, I used to just Google it. What is the fastest graphics card in whatever month of the year that I was in? And then you'd get the name of the graphics card. And then you might watch a YouTube video or two. And then you'd go buy that. And that would be it. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, the four, the GTX 480 was 499 And they, yeah. they actually cost 499 See? Yeah. Th this is way back when. Way long, long ago. You know, four or five years ago and beyond. Um, MSRP was the high price. Like mm -hmm. you didn't spend more than MSRP after the first few months of launch. And no. then like three or four months after launch, you're like, this thing better be under MSRP. Otherwise I'm not buying it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and that's the way people used to buy things. It was like, we're not even going to pay you MSRP ever mm -hmm. or rarely ever. So, yeah. So you search for the fastest and you say, Oh, okay. There's this thing. It's 500 bucks. All right. You know, that's not the end of the world. You search the fastest graphics card today, you see MSRP of 1400 and then you see that they're like two and a half, three grand. Yeah. You know, the average person would be like, what the hell am I doing with my life? I can do that. That's a an all inclusive vacation to Mexico for a week mm -hmm. for two people. Yeah. Yeah. To Mexico. That, that might even be an all inclusive holiday for two people to Mexico from Ireland. <laughs> right. You know, right. like, 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 I don't even, I, I'm getting on a plane. Chris would be getting in his car. <laughs> like, 
I'm not you driving a magic car. I'm only messing. Come on. But yeah, I know. Yeah. What's that like? Fucking Private jet. Three, three thousand miles. Three thousand miles. Probably. It's probably the same distance, really, isn't it? It's fucking insane. Like, what's the drive from where you are to Mexico? A few thousand miles, right? It's gotta be like tw twenty hours. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's gotta be a few thousand miles. I mean. Like. Well, yeah, yeah. I'd say probably to the border from here, probably about two thousand miles. Yeah, well, it was like it's probably three and a half for me to 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 the to the east coast, right? Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's a fucking long ass drive, man. But I mean, like, yeah, I get a plane, right, from Ireland to Mexico for the price of a GPU. That's insane. It's insane. I know. Insane. People yeah. bike. People bike. Like I know people. Ninety like ninety nine percent of people don't do what we what what I do, which is I always buy a brand new car and then drive it till it blows up and then buy a new brand new car. Right, that's what I do. There you um, go. And I do that because you you we have this thing called NCT in Ireland, and it's like you have to go get your car checked every year and then if it doesn't pass it you have to get all of these and like I mean the things that they need you to pass like it's stupid, right? Like you know what I mean. So like you buy a car. And then you have to go every year. But if you've got a brand new car, you get five years without having to deal with that. So, nice. yeah. So you don't have to ever bring it for five years. Uh, and then and then you get every it's every two years for the next two two times. And then it's you know every, every year. year. So yeah, that's why I do that. I just buy a new car and then drive it into the ground until it blows up, right? But like most people, they buy a two grand car, right? You can buy a two grand car with seats, a fucking engine, takes petrol, right? drives drive you can drive to mexico in it right sure you can yeah, yeah. for two grand uh, and you're gonna buy a graphics card for that you're gonna know your audience here right it's fucking crazy yeah well uh was it one or two cars ago that's basically what i did i bought a two thousand dollar car uh, i think it was actually like 1700 oh i got a tax credit too so it was like 1500 after all the like it was during some sort of like uh, stimulus package thing like go buy something and get money mm -hmm. so anyways it really wasn't a lot of money but you know it was a good shape it had like eighty thousand miles on it it was maybe 10 years old yeah that thing lasted 10 years yeah because it's only got half the life cars last for two hundred thousand miles That's at least, how long car, at least. Car lasts. I mean, yeah. some, some cars will go half half a mil yeah, well, what I mean is that 200,000 is kind of before you need to start doing the major stuff to it, right? It's like, you know, major shit will go wrong with your car after 200,000 miles. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like the, the Toyotas, man, I, I've seen those things. I've seen many of those go to half a million and a million and not need more than maybe $1,000 in repairs. So Have you like... ever, sorry, have you ever seen Top Gear, what they did to the truck? Hmm. Top Gear, they got, they, they had this Toyota truck and it was like, it, it 80s right like this thing had been driven into the ground right. and the, the 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 um the rules were that you weren't a, you were only allowed to, the mechanic was only allowed to ever service it with the things that he would have on him when he's going to any job right so yeah. in other words he wasn't allowed to replace parts because he wouldn't have parts but all the stuff that he'd have tools and stuff like that so they they left it on a beach right and let the salt yeah. water come up and oh nice he got it started and they did all. They hit it with a wrecking ball. It started. They picked it up with a magnet, dropped it from the thing. The suspension was fine. It started. They put it on top of a building, a fifteen-story building on the roof, right on the roof, and then they blew the building up, like a building that was designated for demolition. Oh, demolition, yeah. And they blew the building up. Now, in fairness, if they put it in the center of the building, they probably wow. wouldn't have got it. But they put it on the top, and it, yeah. Right? And it started. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you're saying is it's the RX 580 of cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing, right? I was about to say this. So what you're saying about MSRP of graphics cards. I remember the first time I ever witnessed this whole, you know, ridiculously over MSRP was the RX 480. I was on honeymoon and it launched. Um, and I was really excited to see the reviews. I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, and I can't remember what a graphics card. I was using a, a 660 Ti at the time, I think it was. Okay. And I was like, wow, this is a, an amazing upgrade for me, right? And uh, I was like, that, that's pretty cool. And the 1060 hadn't launched yet or anything like that. So I was like, this is, this is fucking crazy cool, right? And I was like, I'm going to get one of those. Um, 
and then I looked at the Irish pricing and the European pricing, and they were all like 289 euro. Like they didn't go out of stock in Europe. I heard they went out of stock in the US. I, they didn't really go out of stock here, but they were all way above MSRP because they were so good that retailers were beginning to take the piss. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it was such a good graphics card launch that they were actually acting the maggot with the, with the pricing. 280, 300 for, you know what I mean? And you were like, maybe I should buy a 970 then? Maybe because they were cheaper. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> and performance at the time was relatively the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I didn't. I actually bought an R9 290X. There you go. <laughs> Sell it a few mining crypto booms later and profit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, told, I told that story multiple times. Yeah, sold it, bought it back, sold it again, bought it back. Right. Fucking crazy stuff. Yeah, but anyway, so 66, long story short, 6600 XT is a stupid card made for nobody unless it's below 300 quid. I think that's a synopsis on, 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 on the... I, I honestly think that we're just going to see <clears throat> that the old way of doing things is dead. Basically, your Pascal and Polaris generation was the end. That was mm -hmm. the end of the old way of doing things. Um, and I think that this is going to be the GPU that basically confirms that. Because when yeah. it comes out at three fifty to four hundred dollars, and then they're selling for five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, and they will sell not as many as AMD hopes, but some people are going to buy these. It's basically the end of doing things. Um, personally, I think we're getting to the point where people like you and I, we're just going to have to buy two, three generations old. We'll just have mm -hmm. to use five, six-year-old technology and call it a day. Because by that point, you know, by the time these things, you know, take uh, 6600 XT, add six years onto it, how much do you think it's going to cost? Probably be like 100, 150 bucks. You'd be like, man, that's a pretty good deal at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know and yeah. uh I, I just think that that's kind of the way things are going I, I think the rational thinking human being is being pushed straight out of desktop pc gaming there are mm -hmm. alternative options like the steam deck that we started off with yeah. laptop gaming also still has some reasonable options what they do is they cut the ram in half if you notice the 3060 only has six gigabytes yeah on the laptop version on the 3050s they only have four gigabytes mm -hmm. That's because they're, that's one way for them to keep the prices somewhat reasonable. So there will be alternative options, but as far as like the premium desktop gaming experience where top of, top of the line was $4.99 or less for pretty much ever, mm -hmm. with a few exceptions uh, from NVIDIA because they were dumb and then AMD said no. Um, Th those days are done. They're never coming back. Even the 699 price point of the 1080 Ti, which I thought was a bit high at the time, that's way long gone. Uh, and the people seem to be okay with it. See, that's the big thing that a lot of people don't understand is it's like, well, if people keep buying these things, it's done. It is done. There have been mm -hmm. enough GPUs sold this year alone for, for AMD and NVIDIA to double their prices from what they launched at this time. Never look back. And people will buy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, there, there, I, like we are getting to a point where there's going to be a two hundred. What, what should have been a two hundred and eighty. But let me give a brief recap because Chris disagrees me with this. But this is what I wholeheartedly believe: the fifty seven hundred XT was always a replacement for Polaris, in my opinion, right? And the replacement for Polaris should have been 250 to 300 bucks but it, it they they pushed it a little bit made it go 20, 10 or 15 20 percent faster than it would normally go got it close to a 2070 seen nvidia i uh, got it to beat a 2070 in fact mm -hmm. seen nvidia were charging 600 bucks for it we're like we're gonna charge 450 the community went fucking ape shit uh, <laughs> nvidia launched the super cards and AMD went, okay, right, God, just, just, just joking, just joking, just, just joshing you, right? 400 bucks. And everybody went, ah, oh, that's way better than what you did before, so grand. Yeah, okay, right, here, shut up and take my money. And, and then, um, yeah, so, and the, six, the, the 5600 XT was a new SKU they created, very much like back when we were talking about the 4000 series. Remember, oh, the four, yeah, the 4000 series, like from the HD 4870, there was a 4830. Do you remember the 4830? Yeah, like it was it was practically the same as like 
the two cards very slightly cut down but it was just like made to fit it like it was never going to exist it was never on a roadmap they just decided where right, we can cut it down a little bit more or sell it at an, a lower AS, asp it, it was uh, just a bin chip because the yeah. 4890 the 4870 and the 4850 all had the full die the 800 yeah. Yeah. uh stream processors so they're like well this has got 720 i think it was 720 yeah memory serves they're like, well, what are we going to do with these? Well, back yeah. in the day, they used to throw that shit out a lot of the times. Like <laughs> yeah. They'd just be like, just toss it. It's crap. It's defective. Throw yeah. it in the garbage can. Yeah, and exactly. occasionally, like Paul was just saying, they'll be like, eh, fuck it. Sell it at a discount. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what happened with the with the 5600 XT is they were probably getting a lot of, a lot of perfectly good dies, but the problem was they were hitting FIs or memory controllers or something. So they had a lot of them and they were like, maybe we can re we can rebrand them. We can put it down to six gigabytes and sell them. Right. I think that's what happened with that one. I agree. Um, and then if it's a really successful product, we could, you know, and we have spare, we can, we can knock down one of the other SKUs down into that. Right. So it just allowed them to have a bit more flexibility. So they re they made this new SKU that wasn't going to happen. It wasn't on a roadmap. I can confirm that. Celso can confirm that. You can confirm that, Chris. It wasn't on a roadmap. They just made this new SKU out of nowhere. And, but now they've made that skew. Now they've set the precedent. They need to hit that price again. If they don't, this graphics card is a fucking is daylight robbery. As far as I'm concerned, that's what it is. It's it's daylight robbery, and it just sets, as you said, it sets the new trend. Even it's even more firmly cements the, the new trend, which is that AMD are just going to take the piss. They're going to milk their twenty percent for as much as they can. They're not interested in growing that twenty percent. They're not interested in getting any more. Uh, market share they're happy with their 20% and they're just going to keep trying to get as much like iPhones went from $700 to $1000 because Apple knew they could not grow the market anymore so they went how do we make more money how do we get more how do we show our investors that we're right. making more money every year we need growth we have to charge more right yeah they couldn't get growth so they got growth in 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 a right. average selling price right different different kind of growth yeah yeah exactly and amd have just just basically it seems like they've they've just consolidated their position there and just went 20 percent is fine for us we'll have more money so we'll just like instead of making a billion from the 20 20 percent we have we'll make two billion from it and and be happy and look sure that looks great to investors doesn't it right well yeah. and then they'll go mcm and then they'll make four billion you know, with yeah. the same twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that, that's that's the case, boys, and and that's the ultimate conclusion that I, I've kind of come to thinking about these things over the past few weeks is um, just use old technology and and play older games. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I got to tell you guys, new games just suck. Number one, you're not getting the full game. The ultimate edition will come out in two years, and then you get everything for the same price or cheaper. So you might as well just wait for that version to come out and buy it at the discount. And then by then, the hardware to run the game will be significantly cheaper. So you see what I'm saying? Like, we're kind of getting to the point where buying new things is for idiots. And we should allow the idiots to do this. Let them spend $5,000 on graphics. That's great. I'm going to buy it off of you in three years for like $150. Hope you yeah. enjoy it. But I'm going to take you for all your worth is basically the way we... Mm -hmm. I, I think that's kind of where my brain's been shifting. It's, yeah. it's not so much how do we fuck these companies over because they're too good at fucking over the average person. We also have to fuck over the average person. Mm. <laughs> I think that's unfortunately the only other option that I'm seeing at this point is how do we take these suckers for all they're worth um, because they're just willing to throw the money away at it and how do we protect our own assets as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where things go, but th that's... I'm like 95% sure that's where things are going. And I think that's where my channel is going to have to go towards is like, Hey, this is the best $200 graphics card here today. Is it worth it? And it's just going to be based off of what things actually cost in the real world. And I might be talking about like a 1070 and be like, this is the best $200 graphics card on the planet today. Boom. Mm -hmm. Buy 1070s. Yeah. Well, like I will say though, in the middle of a of mining boom, now I know I'm a I know I'm a YouTuber and you know therefore I'm not the same as all of the rest of you. But in the middle of a mining boom, I was able to get a 3070, a 3080, and a 6700 XT, and I didn't pay above MSRP for any of them. Um, so like you know what I mean? If you if you if everybody was like me and had patience and waited, 
uh, well, then we wouldn't have this issue. And that's the, I think that's the fundamental problem here is that nobody has patience. Everybody's all about immediate gratification. Uh, if we all said we're not paying that price and you just waited, well, then prices would have to drop. And that's the reality. That's absolute fact. Um, the pro- he, problem is, ain't nobody waiting. And those that no. are waiting, unfortunately, not enough. Of, there's not enough to yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. And, and those of you who are waiting, I hope, I hope, and I pray that what I've been saying is going to come true. And eventually you're going to be able to pick one of these up for 400 bucks. For me, it'll be a slim time because I've already got rumors, boys. I don't want to, I don't want to speak to it, but it, it does rumors. Uh, so the 3060 is being re- rebranded as LHR. Uh, so there's LHR 3060 TIs coming out. Um, right. So uh, I wasn't going to say this on the podcast, um, but uh, Connor from graphically challenge sent me a message saying can you check with your retail chains um you know what your retail sources are they getting stock in and i was like and, he, and i just said are you getting stock and he's like yeah we're getting loads and i sent that on to connor right and then i meant to message him today but i forgot uh, so connor if you listen to this i'm really <laughs> sorry i meant to send this to i meant to send this on to you but uh i then seen that the the cards that he had in stock Colin, i just want to check exactly what they were one was a 3060 ti uh and where is my dms here's my dms uh yeah here we go so uh one was a 3060 ti and the other one's 3080 ti numbers were great like numbers were fucking unbelievable for these for these cards right but they're ti's and then i found out that the, the 3060 ti all of the 360 ti's that you're getting now are all lhr so I thought, right, there's no truth to this rumor, which the rumor is, is that NVIDIA are kind of pulling back on supply of other graphics cards. I mean, would uh, make sense for them to pull back. I mean... Like, I, I heard this rumor, and then Connor asked me about it, right? So if credit to Connor, uh, if, if, you know, because I want to credit Connor, because he, he asked me as well. Right. But I definitely had heard that mentioned before. I'd heard the likes of Moore's Laws Dead say it as well. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd heard this, but now it's like, maybe they are, they really are. Cause we talked about it as well. Right. We talked about the 3080 is going to disappear. Mm-hmm. Funny that I asked this guy the, the, how, how much stock they have. And he didn't mention 3080s. He didn't mention 3090s, but he's mentioning 3080 TIs and he's mentioned 3060 TIs, which are it's now which that one's pretty strange, the uh, 3060 Ti, because that's overall the best product that NVIDIA is selling right now. It's but better it's LHR, than though. It's LHR. This is the LHR product. So I mean, haven't they bypassed that shit yet? I mean, no, not the new LHR block. They haven't. They haven't done it, that it'll, yet. It doesn't matter. It'll be bypassed next week. Uh, so if yeah. you're a miner, I would that shouldn't be stopping you from buying. These things well, what I found really funny. Did you hear that rumor? Oh, that was rumors. It was actually a leak. It was like uh, the thirty sixties. Remember the all the Chinese thirty sixties? Did you see pictures mm-hmm. of those? Yeah. yeah. Remember that was an LHR product. And all yeah. the Chinese yeah, yeah. miners are just bought fucking shed loads of them. Yeah, I mean L- LHR d- or d- does doesn't mean a fucking thing. Not when it comes mm-hmm. to mining. Mm-hmm. So the. That doesn't mean anything. That it's just kind of strange that there'd be thirty six. I kind of figured all one hundred four dies would be thirty seventy TIs and thirty seventies, yeah. and then we would never see thirty sixties again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, no, thirty sixty TIs. But anyways, I mean, it really doesn't matter because if they are going to do the super launch, it's going to have to happen this holiday season. So probably announced Q four, probably September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they stop selling GPUs entirely and just stop supplying the entire planet for about two months. And then raise the price on everything and relaunch the whole line. Mm. That'd be my yeah. guess. Yeah, because my argument is is that like mining collapses, GPUs get thrown on the used market. You've yep. got a small window to buy this, and then they disappear. Like we seen with the 1080 Ti. Do you remember? Like you could buy a 1080 Ti for four hundred and fifty dollars for for a little bit. Yeah, for a little bit. So you're gonna get like a month where you can buy a cheap 3080. And then they're gone. They're gone forever, right? Um, because uh, this is Nvidia. If this happened to AMD, they'd be on the market. Like I think it will happen to AMD. You're gonna get 6800 XTs in abundance, 6700 XTs, 6900, and they're just gonna be everywhere, right? Because nobody, not as many people are interested in that as are interested well, in Nvidia. Well, that's probably the reason why I believe Nvidia is rebranding. Yeah. It's because 
once the 3080s are everywhere, well, now there's the 3080 Super. Maybe it's got yeah. 11 gigs of RAM. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, do I want to spend, buy, spend $400 on this 3080 <laughs> when there's a 3080 Super for $1,000 with one more gig of RAM? Or whatever yeah. the hell they're going to They're going to do something to make it seem better. Mm-hmm. NVIDIA's not dumb. They're going to throw a big enough car- Maybe it has 12 gigs uh, of RAM or something on there. Maybe it has 20. Who the hell knows? It's going to have something that makes yeah. the 3080 look bad. And that's yeah. the whole purpose of the upcoming Super lineup is to dissuade people from buying the cheap secondhand stuff. So, yes. Well, you know that the 3080 20 gigabyte was supposed to be 899. It was 100% because NVIDIA leaked it themselves, in case anybody wants to know this. Uh, for a moment on their website, it was listed. The mm. founder's edition was listed and the price was there. Nice. For a moment in time. <clears throat> so they leaked it themselves months ago. So it was 899 for 20 gigabytes. So you could see them. You could really see them like that to them. Like it's, it's, it's 200 bucks more, right? But it's only 100 bucks more of memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you're using the 103 die instead of the 10. Right. So it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. So it's cheaper. Because like maybe only 7,500 shaders, whatever. But as I said, you, you ramp up the clock speeds. I don't know what that, that, that 103 die is supposed to have in terms of shaders. But like it, yeah. it'll be close enough that the clocks will make up the day. it'll be yeah. just as fa- well it'll probably be like one or two percent faster they'll make sure it's a little faster but yeah th- either it'll be much faster like five or ten percent faster but then you're talking 3080 ti because mm-hmm. that thing's a piece of shit but anyways uh so it can't really be much faster so yeah it's probably gonna be vram that's my guess because yeah. then that really makes you look at a 400 dollars 10 gigabyte card or a 800 or 900 to a thousand dollar 20 gigabyte card Uh and then that's gonna get a lot of people going you know what it's got twice the ram it's worth twice the money yeah and that's the trick that's the my guess this is my guess the trick yeah we've got the trick right yeah there's always a trick and you gotta find out where the trick is with nvidia Mm -hmm. Uh, because they can't go any faster than a 3090 not not by much so Mm -hmm. they they got to use the ram trick that's the easiest trick that they got well, what was the suit? The, the 2080 Super was 4% faster than the 2080. Am I wrong or am I right about that? Uh, it was, yeah, it was very minimal. It was like yeah. 4 or 5%. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember Gamers Next is saying, right, we get it. You can launch a 1080 Ti. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, they launched yeah. the 1080 Ti again, 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 again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, so it was 4 or 5% faster. Yeah. You could see them, like, cut the middle, right? So, like, 4%. So, yeah, it's still not as fast as the 2080 Ti, but it's got more. Ra- no, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Well, they're going to relaunch that, too. Oh, right. They're going to do 2080 Ti Super? They'll, they'll do the 3090 Super and just get rid of the uh, 3080 Ti entirely. Uh, or they'll leave it around if people want it. But yeah, what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they're, they're going to redo the 3090. Yeah. How are they going to redo the 3090, though? How would they do that? You wouldn't put 48 gigabytes of RAM on it, right? Well, so... what they can do is they can give you the full die. They can do the mm. full die, you get all of it. It's 1% faster. Uh <laughs> <laughs> all of your what sorry you quit out there what did you say how many how much percent faster one one percent yeah. faster <laughs> yeah yeah you're one percent faster yeah but it's the 3090 super one percent faster probably like one or two and then uh yeah i don't i don't know i guess that would be kind of tough because they, they got to do something with those crap uh well they'd probably keep selling the 3080 ti with the 12 gigs be like well it's faster so it costs more <laughs> and they'll just do that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know because that one's just a money machine. Yeah. Well, like Nvidia's Nvidia's lineup is a shit show already because you've got the the thirty sixty t the thirty sixty Ti and the thirty seventy that has eight gigabytes of RAM, and you get the thirty sixty that's twelve gigabytes of RAM, right? So it's like, yeah, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, if you were a general consumer and you knew nothing, you'd look at the thirty sixty Ti and the thirty sixty, and you'd go, the thirty sixty is better, right? You would. It should be gigabytes. faster. It has more RAM. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 like that's the way. That's the way. Uh, silly people think of performance. Like they think, oh, it's it's got more RAM, therefore faster. Like, well, that's because technically that is true. You mm-hmm. you you should have higher RAM capacity on your better cards. So, to those people's credit, they are correct. That's the way things should be. That is not the way things actually are. <laughs> No, 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 no. So, 
we've talked about the new GPUs. We have talked about the 6600 XT. We talked about uh, the super lineup, which we we actually didn't plan on talking about that. We no. talked about cars and and how you can get to we Mexico. Got the, we got the Steam Deck. Um, Steam Deck. The last thing would be Alder Lake. Alder Lake. Yeah. So uh, today I put out a video. I um, I don't know how well it's doing, but um, yeah, if you if you're watching this, go watch that afterwards. Um, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Give me the short short version because I I couldn't get to it before we did this. So my short, short version is the other day I put out a video going, I have worries for Zen 4, right? I have worries mm -hmm. for Zen 4. So I put out a video the other day talking about that. I'm worried about Zen 4 is that, uh, you know, people talk about, oh, um, you know, we're not getting any more cores and people get upset about that. And I said, that's absolutely fine. I'm fine with the number of cores we have. That's fine. Where I would be upset, and I said this on the last podcast, is if we get, eight cores again but instead of being 450 bucks now it's 500 bucks right uh and you know and then and then with because because they're doing the zen plus thing and the zen plus thing which with with the v cash of course they're going to charge you more like if you think they're not going to charge you more you're your fucking mind they're giving you more oh, yeah. silicon right they're stacking silicon on top right it's so, fa plain and simple it's faster it costs more welcome to 2021 yeah yeah but it even like they're giving you more chocolate you know i, I like to right. equate silicon to chocolate they're, they're giving you more chocolate so if they're giving you more chocolate they're going to charge you more for the privilege because they want to give you less chocolate and charge you the same or if they're giving you more chocolate charge you more that's what they want to do so they're giving you more silicon so therefore let's say they throw 30 bucks on top of this right on an eight core right 30 bucks on top now you get the zen 4 and Zen 4 is like fucking 530 bucks for an 8 core. Because it's, it's going to be faster again, right? Right. And now you're... Now you, I'm like... So, I'm like, right, this is my worry. Is that instead of getting 8 cores for the same price, or getting 8 cores for a cheaper... Because if we got more cores, you would imagine that the 8 core would move down to where the 6 core is, and the 6 core would move down to where the 4 core is, and the 4 core would go away. Like, that's, that's what more cores would do for you. But since that's not happening... I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with prices continuing to go up, though. However, right? So then, so then, you know, there was these leaked samples of the engineering samples at a thousand bucks and stuff, and that's not indicative of any kind of price of an Alder Lake. Right. But you can buy a qualification sample of an Alder Lake right now if you if you if you want to, you can buy one. They're they're uh, five point three gigahertz uh, single core, five gigahertz all core. Well, let's be honest. You don't have a motherboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, but you can buy them on the black market as well, though. You can buy oh, them. Okay, on the black okay. As well. Yeah, I, I didn't go that far. I'm just like, who the hell would buy a CPU when you can't? Yeah. <laughs> there's no motherboard for it. No. You can buy them on the black market if you're lucky enough. You can buy them oh, on the black all right. market. So, um, it just shows you like this happened with uh the ten nine hundred K as well, right? You could buy it. Oh, mm. I was a ten seven. Sorry, eleven eleven nine hundred K and eleven seven hundred. You can buy eleven seven hundred in Europe before. They even launched the fucking thing, which is crazy. Like, this is... Intel have become the leakiest ship in the universe. It's weird. Well, um, it's all the Joes that, that they got yeah, working on. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Uh, we launched that pro Like, we launched that product today. Joe! Joe! Joe's there kept with paper clips. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Intel is too big a company to not leak at this yeah. point. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh. Their but lack of say, management for so long has has basically just been, ah, shit, do we have the thing? Bob wants the thing. Joe, sell Bob the thing. All mm -hmm. right. And then, you know, he takes the wrong box and gives it to him, and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's, here's my thing. So uh, there was a leaked slide during the week of uh, Intel. I think it was on video cards. I'm not sure. Uh, so go to video cards for the information. Credit the video cards. I think it was them. Uh, and it had Intel referring to Alder Lake as a 16-core part. And if they refer to it as a 16-core part, well, then they're going to, in my opinion, they're going to charge 16-core money. That's what I said. So, right. you know, in, 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 in my opinion, it's an 8-core part, right? That's what my opinion of, of Alder Lake has always been. Oh, shit, 8-cores again? Fuck's sake, Intel. Do you know, that's, that's what I've been talking about. Like, but technically, they're not wrong. They're not it, wrong. They're not it's wrong. It's no. technically a 16 core. Yes, and it's not even like lying the way AMD lied about bulldozer, and I still call that an eight core part. So like, 
You know what I mean? Like it, it's yes, 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 yes. Shut up, Chris. Stop talking logic. Um, <laughs> well, no, it, but, no, it's marketing. It's actually very smart. When I heard of Alter Lake, I'm like, oh, you can't make a real 16 core. So you're making this fake 16 core, but you can still market it as a 16 core. Like I always knew that that was what they were going to do. Mm-hmm. It, it's just genius in terms of marketing. Yeah, it is. So uh, expect six, seven, eight hundred quid for uh the 11 nine uh, for the 12 900k is my expectations on the price of that part now i cannot say for definite whether that's the case but if i had to give you a nod and a wink and tell you that i would bet my house on that i would give you a nod and a wink and bet my house on it so that's that's my synopsis of that and my, my, my uh, and the way i would put it is that intel have gone crazy uh this is just more uh 11 900k nonsense like the 11 900k came out way too expensive it got slated in the reviews it's never going to be as fast as a true uh 16 core from amd even it might win in gaming i don't know I'm, i don't have a crystal ball you know but it's not a 16 core part as far as i'm it's not a true 16 core part. well my, my my guess my guess this is all conjecture i mean mm-hmm. we, we know what alder lake is but my guess is that it's going to be the fastest gaming CPU. And it, both Intel and AMD are seeing how stupid the PCMRs are going with pricing yeah. on GPU. And they're going, well, they're spending two, three, four, five, eight times the price on stuff. What the hell are we doing over here giving people actual value? And I'm pretty sure that both of them, especially starting with Zen 4 and, and probably Alder Lake, I'm pretty sure Alder Lake's going to be Intel's fuck you gamers, we're going to rip the, the money right out of your eye socket. And that's what they're going to do. They will be the fastest. Uh, I'm going to say by 10%. I think they're going to beat AMD by 10% in gaming. Yeah. Which is, it's it's irrelevant, realistically. But it's substantial enough that it's outside of margin of error. Mm. So it's going to be the fastest. You're going to have, uh, I think it's PCIe Gen 5, and you're going to have uh, DDR5. And they might have USB 4, I think. Yeah. So they're going to have all the future-proof shit, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to have the stupid SKU. And they're going to do it. They're going to have their yeah. RTX 3090. Because um, they haven't had a $1,000 consumer-grade CPU in a while. Mm-hmm. I bet you they charge a G-spot for it. And they're going to charge you probably $500 on the motherboards for these things, too. And your RAM's going to be three or $400. So you're talking about, like, the... You're talking about an eight core system that's going to cost like five grand for, for to get mm-hmm. it up and running. But there's people going to pay it because it's going to be the fastest and it's going to be the most advanced piece of technology on the planet. Plain and yeah. simple, boom, mic drop, Intel walks away and then they sell the shit out of those. Mm-hmm. Now, Intel's not stupid enough to know that everybody's going to be that dumb. So they're probably also going to have much lower SKUs like a 12400 SKU. That will make a shit ton of sense with six cores and and then the other cores and stuff. So six cores I, and four. Six and four. Six the, and four, yeah. So I think they're both going to hit the top and the bottom, and they're going to say, screw the middle. So you're going to have the mm-hmm. insane prices, and then you're going to have very reasonable prices and probably not much in between. That's my yeah. guess. So the, so the current rumor, and I think this is true, uh, I think this is actually fact. I think it's leaked on a slide somewhere or something. But it's like twelve nine hundred K eight eight. And it's twelve seven hundred eight four. And then it's like uh twelve six hundred is uh six and four. And I don't know whether they're gonna do like a twelve four hundred that's six and four and on unlo- you know, not lot you know, uh blocked cores, or whether they're gonna just do a six for the twelve hundred twelve twelve four hundred. I don't know, but I know the six core I five K skew is going to have six and four, so that that that's what I know, um, and I completely agree with you. This is lunacy skew. This is this is in in Intel's mind, they've hit it out of the ballpark. They're they're you know they're they're putting up ten thousand points in Cinebench or whatever. They're like <laughs> to to AMD in their seat, right? They're, like you know, and then they're winning in gaming. And Michael's gonna, Mike, you know, Michael, you know who Michael is. Michael is Michael's gonna get angry because Michael can probably make a a fifty nine fifty x beat that score 
right that's fine michael you can do that we're not talking about that we're talking about out of the box factory settings and that's the way all cpus should be benchmarked because 99 percent of people do not do what you do 99 percent of people don't even i would have say it's probably on. like 99.999 like yeah. probably one yeah. out of a yeah. million yeah. or a billion. 99 yeah most people don't know you michael and most people don't have the time or are bothered to put the effort in to be to i don't be waste frank. my time tweaking nothing xmp yeah. and yeah. done that's it yeah but I'm saying, but I'm, what I'm even just trying to get across is that most people like barely put on their XMP on their fucking RAM. I'm telling you, I know people that don't do that. So, I, you know, they, they have to, ha they need, they require help to put the CPU into the socket because they're afraid they'll break something. You know, this, this is, this is the level of, of, of eighty percent of the people who build the PC, right? And, and they build their own PC. So not, we're not even talking about the people who buy a PC from iBuyPower. We're talking about 80% of people who build their own PC are not even sure how they put the fucking CPU in the socket, right? And I got a, I, a guy who I know knows how to build a computer uh, called me up one day and sent me a picture of a socket and the picture of a CPU and went, why doesn't this fit? And he had an Intel, a Intel motherboard and an AMD CPU. I'm not making this shit up, right? <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. Uh, well, I, I just knew exactly where that was going. I'm yeah. like, I, I, I know exactly where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, this is this is this is what you're dealing with. So to say, oh well, it's not fair to compare that. Yes, it is, because that's 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 th these guys are compare. If I was doing a CPU comparison as well, I turn XP on, I would run numbers with Intel Core enhancement on and off, and then I would maybe you know that would be it. Because the reality is, and I would not use fucking uh, what's AMD's version of Intel Core enhancement? It's called PBO. PBO. I wouldn't use PBO because PBO makes your performance worse, and I'm sure it's going to damage your CPU at some point. So I wouldn't do that. Um, but like, that's the reality of how I'd review a CPU because that's how most people are going to run their CPUs. And I think you're right. They're going to launch a 12900K. They're going to say, "Look, it's the fastest," and they're going to show it running more soldiers. And they're going to eventually make Cinebench a real benchmark again. And <laughs> hey, we're, we're winning. We're winning. It's a real thing. Again. <laughs> it's a real world <laughs> benchmark. <It's... laughs> and like, and like, that's the, that's the reality of what's going to happen. Um, and idiots are going to pay that money for it because they're going to, they're going to just lap up that marketing, man. And I was hoping for Intel to launch this eight core, this 16 core part. At 500 bucks. It was 500 bucks and it gave you compare. I'm not talking about beating it, but comparable performance to a 16 core from AMD. I'd be like, you know, 10, 15% multi threaded in that ballpark. I'd be like, wow, this is really competitive because it's so much cheaper. But Intel aren't in that game, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I disagree. I, I bet that they'll do the eight and four, and I bet you that'll be reasonably priced. Probably the, the five to six hundred dollar range like the way that i see intel going is basically i7 will be like five hundred dollars i9 is gonna be a thousand and there'll be nothing in between that's what i'm saying for like five percent faster they're gonna like charge double yeah that's what i think that they're going to do is they're gonna be like if you're stupid enough to give us all this money we're going to take it skew you know yeah. their rtx 3090 skew and then they're going to have stuff for everybody else. I, I don't think that they're going to completely go stupid overall. I think they're just going to screw over the PCMRs uh, that are out there. And then everybody else is going to have a decent option. And AMD is going to have to actually compete. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they will have price to performance competitive options. So I, that's my guess. Now, the reason why I'm guessing that is because that would be the smart thing to do. And mm -hmm. Intel's in such a bad spot that they have to do the smart thing. So that that's where I'm coming from on this one. Um, so I, I would assume that there's going to be some some decently priced stuff. That's why you're going to have boards that still support DDR4 and all mm -hmm. of that because it's all it's going to be a lot cheaper for yeah. people, and that's what most people will use. Yeah, these these chips, as far as I'm as far as I'm aware, support both DDR4 and DDR5. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what was I going to say? There, there is the the i the i seven is eight and four. So I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know what pricing that's going to be. But that that's kind of a slap in the face, right? If an i seven suddenly goes from, I think it what was the i seven last gen four hundred and fifty bucks as well, wasn't it? Like that goes to five hundred five fifty. Like that's a slap in the face, right? 
I guess. But, but I mean, I mean, everybody's getting slapped in the face all over the place. And and mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you're going from, you know, i7 less. Well, shit, it was an eight core and then an eight core. So yeah, last two gens has been eight core. This time it's a twelve core though. So mm-hmm. now. I mean, it's not a real 12 core. It's, yeah. it's actually an eight core. But... Fuck off, Intel. <laughs> Fuck off, Intel. It's my, that, it's my that's that. that's gonna be the argue, the, like the hard part to argue. It's a fucking 12 core. Yeah, technically. I all right. So Paul, I think you and I can agree. We're never gonna call little cores actual cores. We're not even going to call them threads. They don't exist. You're probably yeah. going to have a disable button and just turn them the fuck off. That's probably what any desktop person gamer is actually going to do. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, there are eight cores and six core CPUs. The little cores don't even matter. Yeah. This is a smartphone. This smartphone has, like, four performance cores and four lower power cores. While it's sitting locked on my desk, it is taking in notifications with those low power cores. While my screen is idle and I'm not demanding anything, those, those four low power cores. When I actually ask it to do something, it lights up the big cores. So it's not, it's not the same. It's just not the fucking same. I'm sorry, but it's not. Even if we can load up Cinebench and I get 60, oh, sorry, I get 24 little boxes going around. It's mm. still not the fucking same because fucking <laughs> eight of those little boxes are going to be loading fucking half the speed if not a quarter the speed, as all the rest of the little, little boxes, even the hyper-threaded boxes, right? Right. So fuck off, <laughs> what I yeah. say to that. <clears throat> yeah, and then software that's not specifically designed, or let's say you, you don't want to go to Windows 11 and deal with all the telemetry and spyware and all the crap yeah. that they're doing. This isn't even going to work for you anyway. If you're staying with Windows 10, forget all they're like, you're never going to use Mm-hmm. Unless you turn off all the small cores and just simply mm-hmm. disable them. Mm-hmm. And like I said, a lot of software that it's going to run better with them just turned off. If they try to yeah. do something, it's going to slow down your program. So yeah. realistically, it's an eight core. It's a six core. I'm sure there'll be a four core. Yeah. Could you imagine if like you load up a game and it gets confused and loads the it, like somehow configures out that the the small atom cores are, are core zero so one of those is core zero and just plots the game on one of them like i'm sure that's gonna happen right you oh, gotta yeah. you gotta imagine that's good yeah and 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 all of a sudden instead of getting 150 frames per second you're getting 45 and you're going what the fuck's going on here and you're looking for patches and you're going through forms and people are like, oh, you've got an older like CPU. Well, you're SOL. Install Windows 11. <laughs> well, you'll have to manually change the affinity. So you'll have to yeah. disable eight yeah. of the cores. And, you know, that it's just annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, yeah what, what I think a lot of people are going to do until the software situation gets sorted is they're just going to disable them. I guarantee you they're going to have a way to just turn them off in the BIOS. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the recommendation for most people desktop gamers amd had it with with threadripper right game mode like Mm -hmm. you know to localize everything into one when they had the 2950x and something like stuff like that turn off all the one ccd or something right yeah Yeah, you just yeah you just turned off your other ccd and you were you had an eight core part for gaming and your frame rate doubled it was i went from getting like with with crossfire i think with crossfire uh vegas i was getting uh 25 2700 or something like that in uh fire strike uh just one vega gives you 2500 so to get 20 what the fuck and then i turned on game mode and i got like 3600 uh 36000 sorry 27000 36000 from just turned on game mode so right. like yeah yeah it made a big difference yeah so i i think that's the way that it'll go um mm-hmm. But yeah, if you guys are out there going, yeah, DDR5, I'm getting me some this Christmas, and then you're going to pay. You're going to pay a mm-hmm. lot. Um, yeah. so Intel's cool with being the early adopters on this stuff. So, you know, they have no problems with you wanting to pay. But yeah, so why don't they charge su- supreme amounts yeah. of money? We think yeah. GPUs are going to be three to five grand next gen. Why don't they charge <laughs> two or three grand for an eight core CPU if it's the fastest for gaming? But yeah. it's the fastest for gaming, boys. Yes, spend all of the buddies. I mean, yeah. this is just the logic that's going on out in the world. So why wouldn't Intel and AMD be like, why are we selling stuff so cheap? 
as long as they have a $200 CPU that is good for gaming, like the 11400 or the Ryzen 3600, I really don't give a shit. Yeah. But the fact that there's no 5600, that's worrying. Intel still yeah. offers a $200 or a sub $200 CPU that's just mm -hmm. fine. So Yep. I say Intel is in the better spot for for gaming than than AMD is right now. AMD is the one that's kind of getting lost in the woods. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that exactly. That sentiment of, you know, there is, Intel still hasn't forgotten that, you know, there are people who only want to pen, pay 200 bucks. And I think that was what my video was basically focused on. Boys, if you're not happy with these pricings, then you just don't buy them. And if, you know, are you reward the company that gives you the value option. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want the $1,000 PC to die. I don't want the $700 PC to die. Like, you could have went out and you could have spent, uh, you know, 800 bucks and got yourself like a couple 2016 you could got yourself a cheap cp well 2017 let's say you could have got yourself a cheap six core you could have got yourself uh an rx 580 and then you know ram motherboard you could have got 800 bucks for for a full gaming pc and you're gaming with new parts four, yeah with new parts 1440p we're talking about middle of the road now Instead of getting a two hundred dollar CPU, you're now getting a three hundred dollar CPU. Instead of getting a two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar GPU, you're getting a four hundred dollar GPU. Like that's you know that's that's parts for parts replacing what you used to get with what you get now. That's how much it's increased. So you you've gone up a hundred dollars on the CPU and a hundred and fifty dollars, so two hundred fifty dollars more. So like total cost of entry there, you're now at thousand thousand five hundred for what you used to get for eight hundred bucks. You know, it's 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 sad, and all it takes is one more generation where they decide now your entry level CPU is four hundred bucks, and your you know your entry level GPU is five or six hundred bucks, and people are just gonna be like, fuck that noise! I can get a PlayStation for that. Right. Well, on the upside, for either one of those parts. Sorry. Right, and and the upside is, and that's why I keep wanting to reiterate is at least on the CPU side, we've always had a two hundred ish option. Whether yeah. it's AMD or Intel, somebody's always kind of held the line there. Um, right now, it's Intel. Believe it or not, ironically enough, if you want the cheapest bang for buck, you know, PC, you're buying Intel. End of story. Um, so that's why I'm like, I don't think that they want to get rid of that, but I also mm -hmm. think that they want the max margin. So like, I, I could just see that huge difference in pricing, like the five percent faster, but 200 percent the price i can see them doing that because there are people out there that are paying it and yeah. that i'm okay with personally i'm okay with you going it's the five percent faster but we're gonna charge eight thousand times the money so you go from like a 100 dollar cpu five percent faster 10 grand mm -hmm. if there's somebody stupid enough to give you 10 grand for it that's fine mm -hmm. i don't care about that as long as the 200 dollar or the 100 dollar cpu is still there and uh I don't see it going away there. It's only on the GPU side that we see it gone. There is no $150 GPU coming out this way. Remember, there used to be sub $100 graphics cards every generation. Yeah. Every gen, there was sub 100. Do you think you're ever going to see a discrete graphics card sub $100 ever again? No. No. No, no. no. People were, people, I, I remember I got in a, a fight with a guy on Twitter uh, who was convinced that we're going to get uh, the, the, rtx 2050 ti for less than 200 bucks and i'm like that is not the 3050 going... ti you mean sorry 3050 ti yeah for, oh. for that is not going to happen oh. he's convinced it's going to happen i'm like that is never in a million years all right let, let's talk about happen. it let's talk about it because i think you talked about it in one of your recent videos the 3050 yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah Okay, so this is exactly what's going to happen. So the 3050 Ti is about as fast as the 1660 Ti, except it's got ray tracing. Okay, 1660 Ti was $280. 3050 Ti, also going to be $280. You're going to get zero performance per dollar increase, but you get ray tracing, so NVIDIA mm -hmm. says it's good. So kiss yeah. kiss their green, green ass and, and, and like it. Uh -huh. um then you're gonna have the 3050 which will be probably 1660 1660 super cost exactly as much as a mm -hmm. 1660 and 1660 super you will get zero performance per dollar increase if you're if you're lucky they might charge more on that one you might mm -hmm. actually get a negative performance per dollar 
uh, amount on that one, but you do get ray tracing. And then that's it. I don't think NVIDIA is going to go any smaller. Uh, yeah. With AMD, we are going to get a Navi 24. That That's a power envelope that NVIDIA can't really hit with their process node. Not well, anyway. Um, basically, you're going to get RX 570 and RX 580 level performance at launch RX 570 and RX 580 pricing. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Yeah. You're going to pay there the same go. amount of money for the same amount of performance from four or five years ago. Because it's got ray tracing as well. That's, this is it. Like It's got ray tracing. and it's it's The, the whole push for the 5500 XT was it's more efficient. Now it's going to be it's more efficient and you've got ray tracing. I mean, uh, but even the 5500 XT was cheaper because the yeah. 8 gig model was 200, not 240. Yeah. I think yeah. the price is going to increase over the 5500 XT. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get the same performance yeah. at a higher price point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is it. Like, and I think I actually think your numbers are a little bit off, Chris. I think it might get actually because the laptop skews. You're not. We're not really sure how far. I think it might be a little bit faster than a 66, 1660 Ti. So I think it might be a little bit faster. So maybe five, ten percent faster, and therefore, you know, Nvidia can argue that yeah, we're like we're giving you that for two hundred and eighty bucks, and it's faster than a sixteen sixty Ti. But yeah. you're getting ray tracing and all those that, those things, um. So essentially, what's happened is you've gotten ten percent faster for the same money after waiting two years. Or it's five oh, percent, and, and it's literally margin yeah. of error. Yeah. Or you've got you. Oh, you've got DLSS though. You've got DLS DLSS. Which I mean, I'm not gonna lie. That's a big deal on cheaper graphics cards. But I don't consider a $280 graphics card cheap. <laughs> that's the problem. No. If, it, if no. it was 150 bucks, that's a different story. Yeah. You know? yeah. We need to change this narrative, right? $250 graphics card is middle of the road in terms of pricing. And that only changed two years ago. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh, two years ago, 2018. AMD. Three years yeah, ago. Three years ago. AMD and, well, NVIDIA first and AMD followed suit, decided to change the whole narrative and charge more money because of ray tracing was what NVIDIA said. Um, but, like, that is the reason why we consider still, because it was it's only one generation since then that was 250 bucks, got you middle-of-the-road performance for middle-of-the-road pricing. Right. And it... An entry level graphics card was 100 to 200 bucks. A middle of the road was 200 to 300. And top tier performance was, was 300 to 400. It's and 300 then, like, plus. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, and then, like, enthusiast fucking, you know, flagship tier process was, was 600, was, was, was anywhere 500 to 700 bucks. Right. That, that's right. And, and 700 bucks was, I think they, they did, they did, they didn't know. No, that's the first time they did it with the with the 1080 Ti, right? They got the 700 bucks for like. Te technically, the, the 8800 Ultra was like 900 bucks yeah, way back yeah. when, but nobody bought it. <laughs> yeah, but, because it was an overclocked 8800. Like it wasn't the it, 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 was, it was five or ten percent faster, and they wanted like 30, 50 percent more money. Yeah. People didn't pay it back in 2006. People said yeah. that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then they went, oh, oopsies, and they went back to normal pricing. Funny that we we did that. It's almost like we know what we're talking about, and we've seen mm. this in the past happen. Mm. When people say, "This is how," like you know, the the supply and demand. Well, it's not real. There's no real supply right now. We're in a supply and demand situation because mining took up was adding another pressure onto the, the supply, right. Thing, right? But in gaming hardware, we've never really had a supply issue. We've more had a how much can we get away with charging issue and right. we as enthusiasts used to be the kind of the gatekeepers the police on that and be like that's fucking crazy and review sites used to be like that's fucking crazy mm -hmm. and you know I, I remember reading the reviews of the 8800 can you remember them they were like oh it's a fantastically fast card but nobody should buy this at this price it's fucking stupid like, yeah yes 8800 ultra reviews were the best review for the 8800 gtx i've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's the same with like even with the 780 right which i fucking hated that card right but like the 780 the the titan review well i wouldn't say the titan reviews because the 780 came out of the titan but the, the 780 reviews were so positive 
because it wasn't a thousand bucks, right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, that that the... that's when things changed. Yeah. Um, th that's when things changed right there because Nvidia is like, oh, so we just need to put this thing like way out of reach. So, for example, like l let's say AMD next time around, let's say they get their hundred percent, they're twice as fast as the sixty nine hundred XT. Okay, they mm -hmm. get there, they do the thing with the MCM. Mm -hmm. So they launch a card, and they charge thirty thousand dollars for it, and they go, "It's not for you. This is a professional thing. It's pro professional." And then they, <laughs> they, they they relaunch the same okay. thing minus two CUs per chip, and uh, go, "Okay, this is for you guys. It's ten thousand dollars." What are the review sites going to say? Well, it's not 30. Congratulations. <laughs> this is the way government does math, by the way. You yeah. know, they, they go, well, we propose spending $800 trillion this year, but we're only spending $10 trillion. So we just saved you like <laughs> $790 trillion. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> and You're welcome. <laughs> it's the same logic that the federal government here in the U.S. uses all the time. It's like, well, you, you didn't actually spend any of that $800 trillion and you were never going to get to that point. Yeah. No, we were going to spend it. Don't worry. We, we, we didn't have it, but we were going to do it. We were totally going to do it, but we didn't do it. You're yeah. welcome. Can I can I can I just give you a little bit of an insight that I've probably even ever talked about? I don't know whether I've said this in a video or anything before, but this is one hundred percent like insider information, right? Uh, and it, uh, AMD were not surprised by how fast Ampere was oh, at all, or how slow it was. Or, well, you know, by the perform that we got an actual decent performance increase, right? Well, once what you heard the once you heard the power consumption, like that's yeah. what got me. Like it's actually worse than I yeah. thought it was going to be because yeah. of how high the power consumption went. Yeah. But, but what yeah. AMD, what AMD were really surprised with was the price, right? Uh, of of the Ampere products. So the thirty eighty being seven hundred bucks, AMD were like, what? Because AMD had already been like, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're going to be able to price this thing at like you know. Right. 800, 900 bucks. Like, you know what I mean? And that's why, this is why for the first time ever, AMD created, uh, you know, a Halo product, right? Because the Halo product wasn't going to exist. The 6900 XT, uh, the 6900 XT was going to be the top SKU, but it was going to be like, like it always is, like 50 to 100 bucks more expensive, right? Right. But AMD had to because of, and I just want to clarify in that, these AMD graphics cards are margin-making machines. So this whole ASPs going up thing annoys me because I know that AMD's cards are way cheaper to make than NVIDIA's cards. Like, way cheaper to make. They're not using GDDR6X. They're not using it. They don't need as much uh, power delivery, you know, all the VRMs and stuff like well, that. Well, that's for the AIBs to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ne yeah. Neither AMD nor NVIDIA give two shits about all that because that's for the But I'm to talking deal about their founder's edition, like their, you know, their, their stock right, model, right. right? So they don't need as much of that. They don't need as, as complicated of a PCB. They their, their cooler is fucking a bog standard triple fan cooler, a vapor chamber cooler. Like, it's not even a heat pipe cooler, it's a vapor chamber cooler. And like so, in no ways. And they're using GDDR6 on a on a 256 bit bus. 256 bit bus, really easy in terms of PCBs and how many layers you have to put together. Right, really fucking easy. Right. So, yeah, all of that way easier than making a, a 3080. And Nvidia was selling you the 38 at 700 bucks. AMD fucking lost their minds, I'd say. When they seen the price of that, they're like, ah, oh, for fuck, we're not going to make 70, 80% margin on these. We're only going to be able to make 50. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, don't worry. Just wait for the super line. <laughs> don't, don't you wait. J Jensen said the same thing. He's like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> we could have yeah. made a lot more money off of those things. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, this is poised, though. Like, that... The whole skew is poised. Even if we don't talk about this Magic GA 103, like, there, there's, there's so many more ways to cut that 102 die. You can add some more shaders to that, right? You can, you know... No, there's... every 102 die, they want being a 3080 yeah, yeah. Ti. I mean, 3080 Ti, is that's, that's the NVIDIA printing press right there. What I'm trying to get at is that, right, we've, all, we've just gotten the full skew, for the full 104 die in the 3070 ti didn't we did we get the full skew or did is there still i don't even room? know if it's full like 
I, yeah. I doubt it. But the 3060 is not full. 3060 is not no. a full skew. Uh, so there's room there. There's well, room... well, with with Samsung having supposedly 50 percent ish defective rates, we'll never get a full skew, and that makes sense. I mean, because most likely what's going to happen is even if you had 50 percent of your dies get hit, most likely it's just going to take out an SM. So boom, you just you just never give a full skew. Mm-hmm. You, you just yeah. don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it's just one disabled SM, then you get 99.8 percent yields. You're good to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is why the consoles have redundancy built in, mm-hmm. so they get massive yield back. Yeah. And, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, once we go back to every podcast, I'm going to make sure we say every podcast we talk about OLEDs and every podcast we talk about the fact that the consoles are $500. And, and they're uh, still yeah. $500. Yeah, and they're still $500. And you yeah. can find them in the store. You just have to be patient. I've seen them just sitting there, just walking yeah. around Walmart one day. They were yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So like that, that like this is just any any argument AMD and Nvidia throw your way. Just look at a console, take a breath when you're thinking about this, right? Just look at a console, take a breath, go right. Even if those things cost five hundred dollars to make, make ship get on shelves. It costs five hundred dollars, right? Seven hundred and fifty gets them fifty percent profit margin. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. That's simple. Exactly. So, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was like, uh, it was one of your videos last week. You're like, I don't know how they're going to solve the memory thing. I'm like, any GPU over $2,000 that does not have <laughs> HBM is just dumb. Because, yeah, it might cost four or $500 to throw 32 gigs of HBM on something. But at two grand, it's literally impossible for them not to make 50% margin plus while paying 25% out to AIBs and system integrators and all this other stuff. I'm like, any GPU that has an MSRP of over 1999 that does not have HBM, they are really just trying to take everything away from you mm-hmm. at that point yeah. it just doesn't make sense yeah there is there is no as you say you said it, I, it what was it you said there's no gpu that co- no skew that ever no uh die that ever cost over a hundred dollars to make i completely agree with that i mm. did bring up a, a hypothetical of how you could get there but like even that was it, like 130 yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like but but i mean you've never gotten that as a gamer ever you've never gotten a 100 dollars die to make i remember looking at a price i remember somebody leaked the price of a one a, a, a 106 from pascal and it was it was it was 26 dollars mm-hmm. is how much it cost 26 dollars to make a 106 die so uh you you can imagine it being maximum 50 bucks for for a one, a one uh, for a 104 right so oh, well, even that, for a 102, probably close to yeah, 50, yeah, 50 60 bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm saying is that you got that, you got all of the stuff. If, let's say, uh, you know, AMD's new two dies. So now they're two dies. They're 300 millimeters squared. They're even let's say 100 bucks each. So they're 100 bucks each on five nanometer. 100 bucks each. 200 bucks. And they're still giving you 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's 160 bucks at a fucking push, right? And then you gotta add. You know, VRMs and all that stuff. That's another hundred bucks, and a cooler, another fifty bucks on top. Where are we? Still shy of five hundred, or just over five hundred? Two grand. It it always comes, (laughs) always comes out close to five hundred bucks. Yeah, two grand. (laughs) You cannot. It's like trying to build a PC for twenty grand, right? You can get there if you want to, but you never needed to get there, and you (laughs) have to do an awful lot of fucking inventive arithmetic more ssds and ram than you ever needed right to get there but right. you can get the top it like if you want the toppity top tippity top 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 performance you can get there for about five or six grand right you've always been able to do it you've like even back when what was it like this is another thing that i started my video with today it was like people who were going to say to me well you know uh consumer cpus need to used to be a thousand uh yeah consumer cpus are now four thousand threadripper four thousand Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. The, pe- you know, the people that say that don't understand that that was actually a- there was no HEDT. That was yeah. HEDT. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Like it's four thousand dollars now for for the most expensive consumer right. CPU in the world. Like that's what it is. So like we've gotten more expensive. We've just had segmentation, and you're buying into the marketing if you believe in that. Right. 
Yeah. So um, oh. we, we we should go to questions because we're we two hours off. Two, and, two hours, 11 minutes, I think. Are we? Yeah. All right. Well, that's what happens when you, you drink some beers and you talk about tech. Yeah. By the way, if you want to support the channel and go ahead and support either one of us, links are down below, and that'll get you mm -hmm. the after hours. We decided to do once a month that we're going to drink throughout the actual podcast. Yeah. So this way we, you get an extra special after hours once a month. <laughs> so yeah. that's going to be this one for you guys. So if you don't want to miss out on that, either join. Uh, you can join my YouTube membership or Paul's YouTube membership or either of our Patreons mm -hmm. down below. But yes, I actually have a, quite a few questions and I didn't oh, realize yeah, we were right. going quite this long. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a few, not too many uh yeah, I've got a few. Do you want me to read out my one first? Yeah, go uh, ahead. What kind of performance are you expecting from the Steam Deck compared to discrete GPUs, GTX 1650 or 9280, etc.? So, like, in terms of where are you going uh, to... 1050 Ti-ish. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I am. 1050 Ti-ish. Uh, we're not going to get anywhere. Like, I think if they doubled the CUs, we'd get up to the Oryx 480 kind of levels of performance, but we're not going to get there. Well, and... actually, at 16 CUs, I think it might actually... Well, clocks weren't that great. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, probably. But yeah, I'd mm -hmm. say 1050, 1050 Ti. Yeah, yeah. So what is the... what? It, does, did they give the clocks to the Steam Deck? Just at a uh, yes. Uh, at the high end, I think it was 1600 on the GPU. Oh, that's pretty low, right? Well, it's it's only 15 watt total package, so they're 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 keeping the power mm. consumption down, so you actually have battery life. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that I love. People be like, oh, laptops, they were scale all the way up to here. Yeah, and guess what? Your battery lasts like four minutes, so it's kind of worthless. Mm. I'm gonna do the math on that right now when you pull up your questions. All right. Um, well, this is actually a triple parter. Okay, go ahead. Because uh, it was, yeah, anyways. So we got 8 Bit Bunny, and we got, uh, is the GPU pricing strategy uh, prices going up? Uh, the reason chip makers want to focus more on APU like systems with mid range performance for the mass market. So talking about things like the Steam Deck. Uh, do you want to take it like one piece at a time? Uh, no, go keep going. Okay. I suppose. So then Gen's XT added on to this. So adding to the question, do you guys think that there may be a possibility that we may see APUs that offer low to mid-range, not mid-range between low mid-range performance? So basically, does, do we think that we're going to see APUs that have that are going to replace that, that entry-level price point that we were talking about in mid-range? To me, the real big thing is, is are we ever going to see like uh, the RX 580 range replaced by APUs? Uh, that, uh yeah sorry go ahead yeah all right so then the last little bit a bit bunny followed up again on his own question um will they focus more on uh, more apus for more markets because of energy efficiency and margins to please their shareholders um so basically do we think that apus make them more money than discrete graphics plus discrete cpu i i disagree with that one i don't think so. yeah 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 it, it, it... So, AMD can make AMD selling you, um, let's say, two hundred and fifty millimeter squared, can make three hundred three hundred and fifty bucks, right? Uh, and they're selling they're, use, they're using RAM and everything like that. It's hard to see AMD kind of cut themselves out of a market where they're not only selling you a CPU but a GPU as well. Because they that that's that's the problem, right? So that's the maths. Number one, it's 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 how do you yield these things? How do you charge for them? We've covered this about twenty times already. It's how you how do you charge for them? Where do you put it in terms of pricing? Uh, and the only way it makes sense is if you come in with it like a low end performance, just enough performance to get by and play your games. But like you're really gonna want to upgrade to a GPU at some point. It's just enough to get you by. Uh, because if you give them too much GPU performance, they're never going to buy a GPU from you. And if you do, and also you're probably going to have to charge too much because your die size goes up, and you could right. be selling you could selling these small chiplets. You know, like the small chiplets, they're they're seventy, eighty millimeter squared, and you're able to charge three hundred bucks for it. Like, you know what I mean? You're never going to be able to charge and, that. And soon it'll be like one hundred and twenty-five millimeter squared times yeah. two, and poof, GPU. 
Yeah, exactly. So I just don't, I just don't see a, mar- a market where AMD can make enough money for that to be lucrative to them, uh, to the point where it kind of uh, makes sense to them in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't. Intel really want the laptop market and want to hold on to it. So maybe Intel might do something. I, I really don't know. Yeah, it, it's kind of strange because I, I always believed that AMD would kind of take over that market and destroy the entry level mm. and mid range mm. GPUs with APUs. I've mathed it out realistically with DDR5. You're looking at RX 580 is kind of the high end. Like, I don't really see them getting any higher than that in terms of performance, even with Infinity Cache and all the rest of that. Mm. Maybe a little bit, but that's kind of the at, at best the APUs are going to get, which will be fine ish. But. Honestly, what I think is going to happen is ARM is going to take over that sort of like cheaper area. Just today, NVIDIA is showing off mm-hmm. ARM plus NVIDIA graphics being a thing, like discrete yeah. graphics cards. And they're like, hey, this is a thing. I'm like, it's not super interesting right now because there's no device yet. But we're talking like Raspberry Pi type devices that might cost two or $300, not instead of like 50 bucks. But it'll play most of the games and eventually maybe it has the ray tracings and all of the stuff i think that that's kind of more where the budget market's gonna go um it's gonna be console or like the raspberry pi single board computer thing i don't think x86 is really gonna get there um because like paul just said amd it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to push and as long as intel is competitive with amd on graphics i don't think it's really in their best interest to push graphics integrated graphics either Discrete mm-hmm. graphics is where it's going to be because that's where they make the money because they want to sell you a CPU and a GPU. So you're a double customer. So mm-hmm. I just see that being a giant question mark. And I don't think anybody right now is interested in filling it. Yeah. Just a, uh, just a little bit on that. Um, I just did the math. So eight CU is about 20% of a 5,700 XT. Um, so, uh, roughly loose math with a calculator uh 1050 ti is 33 percent of the performance of uh 5700 xt so it probably would be slightly slower than a than a 1050 ti i mean back of the envelope back of the envelope now right right (laughs) in in and about in and about yeah in the bit not like we're we're close we're close we're close right all right so your question yeah so just want to once again, sorry on that on that APU thing. Uh, 1050, 7950 kind of level performance. There, that's that's what I'm I'm mathing it out to be. Uh, basically, so yeah. Uh, what I, I, I yeah, so I read that one out. What kind of uh, do you think the do you think that the this is from Michael? Sorry, the last question was from Professor VR. Sorry, that I didn't mention your name at the time. Uh, do you think that the 12900K will get higher Cinebench? R20 score than 806, 8,620. Uh, so basically, he's. I think he's mathed it out. He did a. He did. A, he did a whole thing where he's talking around. He thinks it's going to get 8,620. Um, I honestly don't know what. I, scores I have no going. idea. I have no idea what the IPC is of the small course. So I, I can't. I yeah. can't guess if it's Skylake, which everybody's thinking maybe. But even then, with the clock speeds, I'd have to math it out. Honestly, I, I just don't care what the Cinebench score is. It's going to be 10% faster in gaming. And little cores don't matter, and you should turn them off. Mm-hmm. Basically, he's also saying uh, we should treat all of in- Intel's leaks as utter bullshit. <laughs> um, oh, because, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> they, they, um, they uh, basically, they, they lie a lot. And you know what? They do. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's face change cool. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. So, totally hits five gigahertz. Yeah. So <laughs> we. <laughs> I, what what does what does the what, what I really want to know is what does the eleven eleven eight hundred what's that eleven nine hundred k cine bench or fifty or twenty what's that get? Uh, I'm just trying to guru trade. Uh, it gets a six hundred and twenty three single thread right uh it gets 5896 multi-thread so that's just shy of a 5800x um so let's say 
five what's a five thousand eight nine six what did they say it's gonna get it's gonna get five thousand nine eight six it's gonna get fifteen to twenty percent more IPC isn't that what they said the over uh o over ice lake probably 40 percent ipc and then you add 50 percent more cores which don't really translate over it's gonna have 40 percent ipc over ice lake mm -hmm. really yeah i thought it's it was gonna, 20. It, no the ipc is gonna be freaking nuts yeah really yeah over tiger lake it's like 20 25 percent so that's tiger lake, tiger lake had a good jump over ice lake too yeah, so that's, that's 8,340. Uh, and then you've got a, let's say the, the those, add those 25%, small... Add 25%. Add 25% for the yeah, first. Yeah, plus 25%. Yeah, it's going to get 10,400. Yeah, that's about where that leak had it. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they've got the... They've got the 5950X around that number now i know that a 50 i know for fact right we're gonna argue about this but i know for fact 5950x can do 1200 points it's in a bench i know for fact i've seen it I've seen the, 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 there's no way there's no way that a 5950x in cinebench unless cinebench is maxing out before it hits 16 cores and that could be the case i i mean we, we know that it scales rather well but maybe it doesn't scale well enough i mean every program has its limits on scaling like uh for me, Handbrake's a, a big one that I like to use. But past eight cores, that thing just drops off the scaling map. Cinebench scales up to 34 and 64 cores and stuff like that. So no. Well, it's not, still, there's always some loss. So I doubt it's one-to-one. -one, but it's, regardless. I'd say, it's lost, I'd say it's lost due to clock speed more than anything else, to be honest. But still, I've seen 1,200 points in Cinebench from a 5950X. So, Right. Yeah. So well, the, I, I, the, the IPC on those eight cores is going to be ridiculous. Like, it will blow Zen 3 out of the water. That's why Zen 3 needs the extra cash stuff yeah. to, to catch yeah. up. That's actually very impressive if it gets 40% IPC. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, they Intel's been fucking around for a while, and they're like, we're, we're done fucking around. I thought it was 20% on top of Ice Lake, but obviously I'm wrong. <laughs> so, I, well, well I, I heard 40, up, but I mean, that could have been over Sky Lake, so in mm -hmm. which case, then maybe you're right, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll see. Which, which means that it was it'd be way slower than... <laughs> than the, but anyway, look, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a high number in terms of Cinebench scores. Uh, for an A-core, it's impressive that it's even doing over 8,000 points, right? But it's a 16... See, you can use it as a negative, too, but it's a 16-core. <laughs> <laughs> see it's, see, it's see how confusing that's gonna get it's a fucking acorn it's a fucking acorn <laughs> it's a fucking acorn with it's essentially an acorn with 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 triple hyper threading is what it is like i i like that's essentially well, it's like better, what it feels better, like better than that unfortunately yeah. i mean it, i'm interested to see how the shit cores work i i really do like if they yeah. are sky lake that'd be pretty impressive but Chris is gonna go nuts over these. He's gonna, he's gonna find out that like if you just run the shit cores, there it, it, it turns out that it's like a ninety nine hundred K and like it only draws twenty five watts and he's Fuck gonna be yeah. like, Oh I, my god <laughs> I'll be buying those and turning those big cores off left and right. I'm a big I'm a big proponent of using as little power as humanly possible on these things. Mm. Yeah. All right. So uh, I got one from Me Too Lethal. And uh, did you guys see the illegal PS4 crypto mining farm? Uh, how does that? How is that even profitable unless they're getting something for free? This kind of got already answered by Revo. Uh, they were stealing the electricity, so they got it for yes. free. Yes. <laughs> if if you can mine at any hash rate for free, you're you're making money. Yeah. I mean, it's it's literally free money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and these are these are these are criminals. So they probably didn't even buy the PS4s, right? So the only the, the only cost to entry there is buying PS4s, uh, because you have to make back your your initial investment on the PS4s. Um, right. And if you if you if you're not buying the PS4s, if a load of, if five hundred PS4s fell off the back of a truck, and you're able to mine on them, well then. You they're know, not and then paying you... for the electricity. I mean, yeah. it's just free yeah. money. And then you can sell them for 200 bucks after you're finished killing them with mining. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised it hadn't happened sooner. These are computers after all. Mm -hmm. You know, they can run... Li We've known that PS4s can run Linux for the longest time, so... Yep. Yeah, so that, that's that's my thoughts on that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I... Like, like I said, free electricity. And even if they bought the PS4s, I mean, let's say they got them right as the PS5 came out and everybody starts selling theirs off. I mean, they could have paid for them, like, super cheap. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they, they probably stole them. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, allegedly. Whatever. Uh, allegedly, uh, probably, yeah. Um, so, uh, Richard says, uh, will the next-gen GPU be heavily bottlenecked by PCI Express 3.0 X16 interface? I don't think the 3080 or the 3090s bottlenecked yet so no i mean i mean if you're talking about the top of the line card maybe because especially mm -hmm. if we're talking 2x but if you're talking about like the 4060 which is as fast as like a 3080 maybe then no mm. i think no i'm gonna say no for even even like mine does mine was running i told you this before mine was getting nine thousand points in Port Royal, right? Right. Running at PCI Express 3.0 2x. Yeah, I mean, remember, I remember the reason why my motherboard broke. It, it, it's down here, so I don't know where it's gone. But my motherboard broke, and it, the start of it was finding out that it, for some reason, when I put a 3080 in it, it ran right. at 2x. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's getting 9,000 points. It gets 11,000 points. 11,500 points when it's running 16x. So, I mean, there's a lot of room to grow, right? So, so 4x probably would have got me all of the performance, right? 8x. Well, I mean, I mean, it really depends. I mean, uh, was it uh, Tech Power Up every generation does, does a good vi video on this. And I know the 2080 Ti started maxing out 16. Like, there was a difference between 8 and 16x PCIe mm. Gen 3, but it was like 2%. And then this gen is like 4%. Mm -hmm. But we didn't go up that much this time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If we double, it might start rearing its ugly head. So now if we quadruple, so, you know, if we double and double again, then, yeah, you're done. Yeah. You need yeah. PCI 4 plus. But yeah. well, the odds of that are zero. That's not going to happen. Let's just say we're probably good for next gen, but the gen after... No. I, I yeah, I, I would say you probably want to upgrade within the next five years. Yes. <laughs> uh yeah. So your next question, Chris. All right. So this one's also from Eat Bit Bunny. Um this is uh for the QA, blah blah blah. Why do people uh accept the non consistent user face uh user interface of windows still so basically they keep changing the shit around yeah and why is microsoft getting away with asking money uh for end user licenses still now it kind of goes into some other stuff but that's kind of the question so like why is microsoft getting used getting getting away with charging for windows yeah like how are they able to charge for windows and uh was it how come they keep fucking around with the way things look and people are okay with that and they're able to charge for windows because they sell windows like you know what i mean like how is a car a car cleaning company able to get away with charging for cleaning your cars well the difference is nobody nobody else actually char well i guess apple but nobody cares about apple yeah. but all other operating systems are basically free for mm -hmm. just about everything so yeah. it would be like coke charging you a dollar for a can of soda meanwhile like pepsi and rc and like everybody else just gave it away for free it's yeah. like, how can you get away with that type of thing? Well, like, I, I'll give you an example. So I've got a, uh, I've got um, GIMP. I use GIMP. GIMP is free, right? Um, Daz uses Photoshop. Daz would never use GIMP ever in a million years, because he's grown up. He knows all the shortcuts for Photoshop. He knows how Photoshop works. He knows what way, where to get things in Photoshop. He knows how to export things in pho Photoshop. Is 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 Daz's baby, um. So therefore, like I, I never, I never used a photo editing tool ever in my life. So coming to it as a new user, I was able to go, "What's free? I'll learn that." Uh, right. If you're somebody who's, Daz was a photographer for years. So uh, if you're, if you're somebody, I just think it's, it's, it's familiar, familiarity and knowing how to do things and knowing where everything is and yeah. That's and, a and, nice and, way of saying laziness. Yes, laziness, <laughs> laziness, paying for laziness. 
Uh, like I mean, as I said before, there's people who who pay fifty dollars for a guy to come from from Walmart to install your PS5 for you, plug <laughs> in the HDMI. Like there is, right? True. Laz- and, laziness knows no bounds. Yes, yes, yes. There, there's there's supermarket people won't shop at supermarkets unless they've got go karts they can go around in because they're so fucking lazy they won't walk around the fucking aisles. Like like this is the reality of the world that we live in. Um, regards changing the uh, the way things look, I like that sometimes. You know, there 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 have been iterations of Windows where I didn't like it. I didn't like Windows eight. I didn't like Windows eight point five or whatever it was. Um, but I liked Windows ten. Thought it was cool. Um, I didn't like how it required me to give away all of my data to them. But in terms of if it was just a s- aesthetic upgrade, I thought it was a pretty pretty nice aesthetic upgrade, and I like the way it works. Um. So I, I, I think every now and again you need to keep things fresh and, and change. But as long as the, the fundamentals of how it works, and, all, and as long as everything kind of, you've got a search bar, you've got a start bar, you've got, as long as everything's kind of, I think yeah. I'm fine with Th- that, that was actually giving me my point is uh, essentially Windows hasn't changed yeah. ever. I mean, there's still a control panel. You can still do all the same shit that you could do in the other stuff. Yeah. For the most part, it's fundamentally the same. Windows 11 is not going to change any of that. It's basically going to be the same. Mm. Um, in terms of the licensing, it's what Paul said. Everybody's been indoctrinated into the house of Windows. Um, mm. Linux is just far superior. Just anecdotic, anecdotally. Uh, for example, like I had an SSD in an external you know, USB 3 enclosure. Read write speeds on Windows, 250 to 300 megabytes per second. Linux, 500. <laughs> Maxes it out. Linux is literally better at everything. Every possible thing, better. But even at free, people still just go with that laziness. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, if you could just unplug the internet for like 10 years, nobody would use Windows ever again. Yeah. It's also there's two, there's two other things that I would add. Number one, when when Microsoft has done a really good job of including Windows in almost every sale of a PC for the last god knows how many years, oh, yeah. which got people indoctrinated into it. Uh, they practically gave away licenses to to, to mm-hmm. OEMs for for real cheap. Like I remember buying an OEM CD. Do you remember? Do you remember you could you could buy the box of Windows and it was like. Well, you had stupid, the, re- the retail, and then you had the OEM, yeah. Yeah, and then you get an OEM was like eighty bucks, and you were like, "What's the difference?" Like, I remember finding out about these for the first time. I was like, "What's the difference?" And your mom was like, "No difference." And I was like, "But like, seriously, what's it?" He says, "The difference is this box it's in. That is the difference." <laughs> and I was like, "Really?" <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh, so like, yeah, we know Microsoft did a really good job of that, and not only the, because they did a really good job of that, a lot of the software that people use can some of it can only be found on Windows as well. Uh, most. So, I, I'd say most of the stuff that the average Joe uses on a day to day basis is Windows only. Exactly. So, yeah. You'd have require to use Linux. You have to learn a new operating system, and they're average Joes. So they're not as tech savvy as you and me, who are willing to go and do the googling and the YouTubing and all the stuff to find it out. And, and, and by that, Paul means the configuration menu is just simply located in a different spot. Most people yes. are not <laughs> willing to deal with that. Like it could be called the exact same thing, look exactly the same, do the exact same thing, but if it's not located in the exact same spot with the exact same title with the exact same font and the exact same color, with the exact same icon, the average person has no interest in this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I just think, yeah, I just think it's, uh, we're, we're, everybody seems to think that they're the, like, you're the same as everyone else, but you have to empathize. You have to, literally, you have to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who will call you up because they put their HDMI, HDMI cable in the motherboard HDMI port instead of the graphics card these people exist and they outnumber you 10 to 1 mm-hmm. fact <laughs> yep yep i've been in sales too much to disagree with that <laughs> yeah um so uh the relativist wants to ask you uh to chris does the switch win against the steam deck uh win uh just sorry you win against the steam deck win in your opinion due to oled so in other words 
I mean, I'm not going to lie. That is definitely a huge advantage. Right. If they went with a Switch Pro that had a little more RAM, maybe a little faster, maybe a little 60 FPS a little more often, mm -hmm. then, yeah, I'd be like, the, the Switch with an OLED, I would definitely take that. Even if they charge an extra 50 bucks, so it's the same price. Same price, same amount of memory, all the rest of that. If you got OLED and you got better performance, that'd be much more competitive. Yes. But... Yes. I mean, it really comes down to this. If you have a Switch and a shit ton of Switch games and you've never played on PC and you have no PC games, Switch is the better deal. Now, if you've never played on a uh, Switch before and you got no Switch games and you got a shit ton of PC games, Steam Deck makes way more sense even without the OLED. Mm. It, it's just where your software is is where the value is. Mm -hmm. I have to say, um, you know, we are going to get the plug in for the OLEDs, boys. Chris seems to put the, the, the OLED, uh, what are they called? Affiliate affiliate links in the, in the description, so hit those up. Yeah, uh, yeah. if you want to buy an OLED, go for it. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, but uh, the, I have to say, I have a 65-inch OLED. It's not a gaming display. It's not as good as the C1 or any of the other gaming, you know, but I have to say, um, I, I've just gone back and watched movies that I haven't watched in a while. Or I've gone looking for HDR compatible content, like, just so I can enjoy the visuals. It's so pretty. So mm. we're not even talking about, like, you know, like, the, the zero lag and the zero, you know, and zero gray to gray. All these things that, that OLED is much better at than, than LCD. We're just talking about sheer image quality. OLED is just better, and there's no comparison. It's more vibrant. It, even though it has lower lower peak brightness, because the dark, the blacks are black, and the right. whites are white, they, it it looks brighter, right? Right. It looks Cause, more. Yeah, because the dark's darker. You don't need as much yeah. brightness. Yeah, exactly. So I would say. Uh, if anybody is out there looking for a display upgrade, buy a fucking OLED. And don't listen to how, one time I'll say, don't listen to fucking Tim from Hardware Unboxed. Fuck him. Actually, I, actually no. <laughs> Tim, Tim hit it right on the nose. He yeah. flat out said, like, everybody thinks that it, uh, he was knocking on OLED. Uh, he wasn't. He literally told you everything you needed to know. You just yeah. weren't listening. He flat out said, for media consumption, that means watching movies and playing video games, there is nothing better on this planet. No, I agree. He, I agree. He, he I agree. flat out said that in his review. That He's is the only. That's the only thing you need to hear from that entire review from Tim. He flat yeah. out says there is nothing, nothing else that's even close to this for media consumption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of his negatives mean nothing if what you primarily do is watch movies, play video games, and, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And do you know what, Tim? I will come counter with you with. You can still buy, you can buy your 400 quid or your, you can fuck you, you could buy a fucking 150 quid 1440p monitor and sit there and read your emails and all of the things and then turn your, turn your chair slightly <laughs> and have your 4K OLED. Uh, but no, I, I'm, I'm, I was obviously being a comedian. I was just, I was just joking by saying, uh, "Fuck it." For the first time ever, I'm gonna say, "Fuck hardware box." There, there, uh, were, there was a lot of people that were not happy with, yeah. with Tim on that one, and I was like, I felt like he was very fair. In, in I his thought, review. yeah, yeah. Look, people are in the OLED club, or they're not in the OLED club. Even Lauren, you know, like Lauren, Lauren has accepted the 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 wisdom of the OLED. She knows it's better. But she's very concerned about burn in, and to which I said, uh, "This is a pixel. This is my this is my my daughter broke my smartphone the other day. So this is my my backup smartphone. It's uh, a Pixel 2 XL. It's got an OLED. It doesn't have any burn in. It's when did the Pixel 2 XL come out? Fucking 2018 or something like that. I don't, 20, know. I don't do 27. Phones. Yeah, so that's like, phone I is... bought from like 2012 or something. Well, well, this is old as balls, and um, it it doesn't have burn in." Uh, the only people who get burn in are people who don't lock their screen when they're finished. The only people who are going to get burn in with a with a uh, using a uh, OLED as their their display are the people who don't turn their PC off when they walk away from it and just leave it well, on. It's, and don't it's have not even PC. It, you're only going to get burn in if you're one of those people that just sits there and watch CNN or Fox News all day and has got the same fucking thing in the corner all day. Mm, yeah, that that will burn in after about a year. Yeah. So don't watch. Well, no, rule number one: don't watch the news all day, especially not mainstream news. Get rid of that mm -hmm. nonsense. Um, 
if it doesn't work on an OLED, it's not good for your brain. <laughs> so I'm going to go that, that route, but yeah, past yeah. that, you can't burn it in. My OLED's basically been on for a year straight between like having the kid and people over and it, it's like on all night long and people are watching him and it's on all day, every day. And it's fine. Mm. Yeah, exactly. 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 So yeah, you, you know, you're the next question. If you have questions, I think I got one or two more. The triple parter there was, was a big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, was it, we got, uh, Inuki and we have, uh, what's an average overclock on a GPU? Like is 100, uh, core clock megahertz low, decent high. And at the, and same for megahertz. I think it means like memory. Um, I know every GPU is different, but what what's the average? So, like, overclocking GPUs today, Paul. What, what's it like overclocking GPUs today? So, this thing here is... I can only speak for, for the GPU that I have. So, this is, uh, oh, yeah. this is a 3080. I've had a 3070 as well. Um, that thing, without doing any crazy stuff to it... Uh, will run at 1900, just, just out of the box, it'll run at 1950 megahertz. You can get 2150 megahertz out of it. Um, pretty, I, I'm pretty much guarantee 90% of people will be able to get 2150 megahertz to 2100 megahertz out of it, right? Uh, memory, you can slap 800 megahertz on the memory, and that's a huge overclock. No problem. Um, with the 6700 XT, I'm finding it, it it's it, it runs at 2500 megahertz you can get a 2700 2800 megahertz uh memory it, it doesn't overclock that all, all that much like a few right. hundred megahertz uh AMD, i think amd just uses cheaper memory modules i don't know whether that's true or not i, I don't want, but every time i've tried to even with like navi one and navi two i've never seen extreme overclocks on memory for amd graphics cards Whereas it does seem to be the case with NVIDIA. So, I don't know. Temp, you can you can make this run as fast as 3090. You can make your 3080 run as fast as 3090. So you can get 8 to 10% performance out of it. And there that's what go. I was going to say. At this point in time, there is no sense in overclocking GPUs mm -hmm. or CPUs yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. If you get less than a 25 to 30% performance increase, which no GPU and no CPU is ever going to give you ever again, it's not worth it. Basically, mm -hmm. if you're not getting the next tier, if your eight core can't beat a twelve core, it's not worth overclocking. Mm -hmm. If your, uh, you know, if your thirty sixty is not going to beat a thirty seventy, it's not worth wasting your time overclocking. That's what we used to get. That's why we used to overclock. Nowadays, your best move is you take your chip, you undervolt, and you basically tweak it so it draws as little power as possible while maintaining its stock clocks. And then this way you can save a few bucks over the life of it. And it helps save the life of the GPU because it doesn't run as hot. That's yeah, the smart just, move. Yeah, want to come in on that. So that card, you can make it run at 1900 megahertz while drawing 250 watts. <laughs> so, so you can make it run the same, but draw way less power. And yeah. which one do you prefer? Way less power? Because the reality is probably 5% of the 3080s out there won't do that. But that's just to get an extra 5% into the binning. Do you know what I mean? So, like, a lot of 3080s out there will do a very good undervolt. And if you're not if you're not getting the same numbers I'm getting, you maybe you can run yours way lower than me. Well, then, well, congratulations. You won the Silicon Lottery, and, that, and that's brilliant for you. But I'm just saying, I, I guarantee you, you'll get. And the same with, like, you see the 6700 XT? I think right. it runs at 1200 millivolts when it's when it's when it's balls to the wall. It runs at 800 right. millivolts when it's doing nothing. You can make that run at 800 millivolts and get almost the same performance out of it. So like, right? You know, like yeah, you're yeah. losing some performance, but you're not losing a lot. Yeah, to me that's more impressive. You drop 50 percent the power consumption, lose 10 percent performance. I will yeah. sacrifice up to 20 or 30 percent of my GPU performance mm -hmm. any day of the week to gain double that in power efficiency um mm -hmm. just because it makes things run cooler it's gonna last a lot longer it's a lot quieter um all of the good stuff basically all the benefits in the world and you're not really dropping much of performance so yeah overclocking is is just dead yeah well i'll go with but like so the last graphics card i had that really scored really really well was a vega uh vega 56 
And I went from scoring uh, 1,900 points in Firestrike to scoring 20, 2,560. I'm oh, sorry, 2,000. I went to scoring 19,000 19, in Firestrike to scoring 25,070. And I was running at lower voltage than stock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Vega was kind of an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that was that was very impressive because it he was actually running cooler and quieter while giving you more performance. That was kind of insane. Uh, overclocking is dead now. Every GPU is tweaked to run as fast as it possibly can. Or um, damn close. Yeah, or damn close. You're getting ten, if you get ten percent, you're doing well. My only argument with the ten percent is, uh, why would you buy a thirty ninety when you can make this run ten percent faster? Because the thirty ninety can go ten percent faster. Yeah, but that's fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> well, if you're willing to spend fifteen hundred bucks for ten percent, I mean, people that's... who say that are the people who wouldn't overclock it. Like, <laughs> just fuck off. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, is my question next question? Yep, you're up. Uh, so, yeah, Michael does say maybe in, maybe in Nintendo should sort out the drift on the Joy Cons before bunging, bunged in the OLED. Uh, which, fair point, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, if your controller yeah. isn't 100% solid, get on it. Uh, and then PF100 says, at what point do you decide whether to give a tech YouTuber a break? Or not based on bad recommendations. Thirty ninety, just buy one or two, or thirty eighty ti. It's a good deal. I won't name names, but we already know the names. <laughs> um. So what point so, do you decide so, to so, give them So a basically, break? like how how you should give them. You know how how many passes should you give bad takes? I mean, yeah. ev- everybody's gonna have a bad take every once in a while. Yeah. Um. It's just if it becomes a regular pattern, and if you notice that the pattern is repeating, that's when you need to be like, delete, unsubscribe, Patreon, give my money to somebody else. Um, mm. You know, that yeah. that's when you need to do it. Now, like yeah. every once in a while, like I said, Paul or I will just ha- have a bad video, or maybe we're just mad about something and it doesn't come out right. That's going to happen. But mm-hmm. like I said... If you know, like if Paul and I every week were making videos where all we did was just rail besides this podcast, if we made videos where we just went out and just railed about the same fucking thing every day about it. And if you're not interested in that, then you got to cut the cord, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would say is uh, you, you've got to, I don't think you cut people slack. I think you've got to be more intelligent about what you look at. Why, why would people be saying these things? Um, and I've said this before, and I, I just, uh, I, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody in particular, because this is going to be mentioned in other people's comment sections. I know it's fucking going to be, right? But if somebody is recommending to you a higher price product than a product that makes sense to you, and then does links to that higher price product in their comment section, uh, in their description, they stand to make some money by doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so affiliate links are a thing. You make two right. to five percent on each sale, and five percent of twelve hundred dollars is better than five percent to six hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. This is just just something that you can you can run through your mind uh, and think about. And I know for a fact that certain names that you're mentioning have those links in the description, and probably a lot of their revenue comes from those links. Probably more than like myself or Chris, because me, Chris, me and Chris don't really make recommendations on purchasing decisions other than OLEDs, right? We, we, we tend to just go, the few, we, we tend to talk about, we used to, well, Chris used it, I definitely still do, about future tech and what's going to come out in the future and, you know, how the market's going to move or whatever, blah, blah, blah. We don't tend to go, oh, a 3080 is amazing. Yeah, you know, no, we're, we're, more, we're more informational. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. We, I throw in affiliates. Like if I mm. 5700 XT came out, yeah, it's pretty good. It's 1080 Ti for 400 bucks. Yeah. Throw some affiliate links in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, but you wouldn't you know, say a 5700 XT is a great fucking card. You should buy, like, you wouldn't say, sorry, you wouldn't say buy a, buy a 2080 Ti instead. Links are in the description. <laughs> Well, well, I'm not Digital Foundry who literally did that in their video, but <laughs> you know, like, gotta look at people's motivation for the reasons why they're saying the things right. they're saying. 
Right. And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it looks like they're just out for profit and they're just telling you to buy more shit because it makes them more money, stop mm-hmm. listening to those people. Because mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. that point, you're listening to a salesperson. You're watching yeah. a goddamn commercial at that point. That's all yeah. it is. It's a commercial. Yep. Have you got one more question or is uh, that it? I believe that is it on my front. I am mm-hmm. done. I'm done as well. So that all righty, guys. So that was kind of a long one. And yep. uh, the after hours are going to be interesting. I'm starting to feel a little bit. I think I'm four yeah. or five deep. So if you guys yeah. do want to get access to that, links are in the description below. you got to be a patron to either Paul or myself. Either one is fine. Or members over on YouTube, either of our channels. And that will be posted up shortly after this video goes live. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's all I really have for these guys here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.